Okay. <laughs> is everything working? Oh, my audio is so borked. Hey. Hey, Vidro. My audio is fucked. I like everything. My setup, everything on my end is kind of broken. So, like, forgive me. Forgive me if I sound weird. Uh, let me know if it sounds all right, actually. I've been, I don't know what the fuck I broke, but some. Okay. I'm turned on my compressor, which should stop me from sounding too quiet. Uh, maybe that. And I'm glad it sounds good. Hey, Crow. Finally first. Crow, you're so early. Look at you. Um, <laughs> how am I doing? I'm doing my best. If I'm honest with you, I, I had a delicious, delicious Burger King, Burger King meal, if you will. I had a delicious meal from El Burger and like, you know, feeling good, feeling good. I know the Americans hate Burger King. Should we do a fast food tier list soon? <laughs> that would be fun. Oh, also, um, doing, Hey Mark, Mark, oh, my baby boy, Mark, uh, Mark, I'm, I, I'm trying to come and see you. So that I would no longer miss you. We could be together. My beautiful baby boy, Mark. Um, what was it? Yeah, guys, do you think we should do a fast food tier list? Also, uh, the next tier list is handsome slash beautiful. I mean, just, just call it beautiful. Beautiful character faces. Like, that's it. Like, I'm going to do a tier list of character faces. Uh, I'll make the channel on the Discord, like, today or tomorrow. Time for big bag web, to, big bad web tune. That's such a mood. Like I does, I, I feel, I feel like I am not. I feel like I'm not. Um, um, I'm not anti web tune. Unfortunately, for everybody, look, that's a lie. That's a that's a bold face lie. <laughs> Actually, now that I said that, I said that, and I immediately went, "That's a bold face lie." I am as anti web tune as they come. Um. But, like, I don't know. I have a lot of thoughts about this one. Today, untruth, unfortunately. Yeah. But I have a lot of thoughts about today. Like, today's one is, like, very on my mind. I have been thinking about, oh, that 100% IP thing. Like, there's a lot. There's a lot to unpack. Okay. Let me just, you know what? Fuck it. Let me just fucking get the screen. Let me open my email. Because there's actually, actually something I need to show you. And like, I'm, did I delete my last stream regarding the webtoon issue, Crow? Yes, I did. I was getting a lot of harassment on the last stream from kids I used to teach, and it really like fucked up my day, and it just fucked up the stream flow, and I just got rid of it. I want to cover it again in a few weeks, just so that I can put it um, up again. Uh, but there was no like secret reason. It just like everyone who was there can tell you it was an exhausting stream. I was depressed, and it actually kind of ruined my day. It ruined my day week. It was a lot of weirdos. Some, like, it was literally, like, when one thing ended, another thing started, and I just did not have the mental fortitude to deal with it and, like, leave that up. Because I work really hard to produce these streams. I, like, I like research all the information, and I organize everything into a visual kind of thing. And, you know, when things don't work out, you know, my perfectionist brain cannot handle it. Um, my perfectionist brain cannot handle it and you know call me a dumbass that's fine but I just wanted to be upfront with you about it um, okay we have a lot to cover I want to start off today's topic with like a basic one so let's do like a let's I don't know, let's, let's change the episode name <laughs> this is still an episode 2 but let's change let's change the actual name I called it. Okay, chat chat gets to choose to the, the, the actual name of today's episode. So if you guys don't know this, in the screen behind me on every stream is the real name of an episode, and the name I put is the clickbait name. Right, the name I put in the, in the title is the clickbait name, the name on the stream is the actual name. So what do we wanna call it? What do we wanna call today's episode? I'll take one, any suggestion. Just drop your suggestion, no bad suggestion, but I wanna hear what people think. Um, <laughs> that's a cute little cat emoji. Uh, cause I'm thinking, I'm I'm thinking like, lol, lamau. 
XD. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking to call it today's episode. Long Lamau XD. But I don't know. Maybe that's in poor taste. <laughs> okay, you know, I feel like that's not it. I feel like that's too, too long. Hello, Paige. By the way, if you don't know, Paige is doing a Kickstarter right now. Um, Paige did not pay me to say this. Um, Paige is doing a Kickstarter right now. And, like, you should go get it because I already did. I think I did. I did. I think I did. I was going to use my secret connections to Paige to get Paige to just let me pay them directly so I don't have to wait for the Kickstarter and I can get my stuff signed. But I thought maybe I was, I, I was like, nah, let's be like the rest of the peons. Let's operate as expected. <laughs> and so I've, I, have, um, I have just put my money in like a normal person. You should go, you should go support uh, Paige now. Support Paige's Kickstarter. Okay. I gotta, Paige. I gotta support my own, you know? I'm gonna support my own. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's do another. We're gonna start a topic we don't expect, so let's go. Ooh. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Eyes Wrong TV show. Hey, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Webcomics Hubcast. It is me, your leader, supreme thought leader, the cult leader of our group. Me, you, and us together. Episode two, season four of the Web Comics Hubcast. Uh, we have a big topic today, and it's going to be most of the episode. But I wanted to start off with the light. No, that's a lie. It's not light. It's small. It's like I want to talk about the Hanzo art thing because I think it's such a small, like relatively small thing compared to the other thing we're going to talk about. And it's just to say a very small thing. Um, I spent a little bit of time. Uh, watching like looking into the hands of art thing after some people in my discord brought it up and i looked around on twitter and here's the basic hands of arts community is has been not very nice <laughs> kind of pushing a ship of their characters that they don't really like to see onto them and Hansa has been working is the creator of the comic the guy upstairs and the community has been kind of pushing a ship between two characters onto them Hansa then just decided to make a tweet where they pointed out two characters in their story are siblings. Um, and the community just went absolutely fucking insane. Um, I've read too many Reddit posts and too many Tumblr posts at this point about the situation. Um, and like, I just wanted to kind of put up front, hey, I'm glad to see my community feels bad for Hanza because I think that's the right thing to feel. I don't think, I don't think any, I, I, when making a comic, a comic is a very personal thing for a lot of people. It requires a lot of, emotional investment into these characters into these as people and often many, many creators see their characters as more than just drawings they see them as full-on fully fledged individuals in their minds and so um while i completely understand that there's a little bit of an angle here for some people that is you know to some extent hansa you're a professional creator you should be able to push the stuff out of your mind and move forward i also think that like when you work so hard on a comic when you work so hard on something like this and your community kind of pushes that onto you and like pushes pushes certain things onto you that make you less enjoy your story less enjoy the thing that you've worked on less it really kills the passion the drive for making what you want to make and i feel really bad for them and i don't think they deserve that i just don't think they deserve that there's obviously an angle of like hey get like perspective is always important to get and you know being able to work and talk with other people who've dealt with this um kind of issue which is a lot of artists is an important thing that you should do for your own health, for your own mental. But um, at the same time, like they just, this is a shit situation all around because a creator that's very, very talented, has a, puts a lot of hard work into this and is very clearly very like good at what they do has basically been pushed out of creating what they were enjoying because the internet isn't a very, isn't kind. Unnecessarily so. You know, you can't control how your audience interacts with you, but at the same time, um, your work, your like people shouldn't make you feel this way about your work. And I just think it's unfortunate. I don't want to like go into a whole thing about whatever, because the thing is, I don't know Hansa. I don't know how they feel internally. I don't know like anything about their internal state as a person. 
but they've the way they've talked about this and the way they talked about the situation with the with their um comic it's just it's clearly been very personal and i just i thought it would be fair to be like up front and be like hey you know if in case anybody asks me to talk about this which i know people always do so like i get comments when people ask me to talk about stuff like this when people ask me to talk about this i don't think hans is in the wrong i think they deserve way better than they got and i hope Whatever they end up working on, if they keep working in art, especially, that it 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 keeps them happier. What's it? English language fandoms are fucking weird. Um, I understand fan entitlement a little bit, but like English language fandoms, I have found to be incredibly weird. We in the English speaking space, we are so prone to getting almost near infinite content that we have completely forgotten that the people who make this fucking content are people, you know, and we should treat them as such, and they will see the things that we say. Like, I will never forget, I got a DM. This is like, this is, I'm not big, right, to be very upfront. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm minuscule. But, like, it was a maybe a few years ago, I got a DM from somebody that was just near psychotic, right? It was somebody, like, basically fawning over what, I'm ta- what I work on and trying to have me tell them secrets of the industry or whatever. And I, I, I never felt, I've never known how much something could put me off making videos and making streams than somebody talking to me in a way that just made me incredibly uncomfortable what I put time into. Because I don't think these things are like drama streams or whatever. These are This is news. I try to cover industry news. I try to avoid talking about quote-unquote drama. I, cry, I don't have secrets to give out. I'm not some like angry fucking manosphere streamer. And so when they were talking to me, they were talking to me, the way they were, they were, talk, the way they were talking to me, I felt very put off of what I was working on. And like, you know, that's on a small level. That's one person. Imagine hundreds of people doing that. Like, it must be exhausting. It must be like, it must be genuinely hurtful. And like, I just hope that they continue to make stuff. I think a lot of creators have to go end up going through this when they get larger. And like, other than like, other than like ha- having healthy coping mechanisms to allow you to kind of de- De- decouple yourself from the internet which is something that i had to do which has really helped me like not really deal with when people say weird shit to me anymore the same other than that like you know you just don't deserve that people don't deserve to like deal with that that's fair anyway that's kind of it on that nose uh hey paris hey everyone for showing up yeah we all hope hansa's all right and we all hope that things you know just get better for him that's really it yeah, right? On the scale of an original square, it, gets we- it must get weird. It must get weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, let's get to the thing we wanted to talk about. Let's get to the thing we wanted to talk about. I changed the topic, so you know where we are. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to today's stream. Um, again, oh, you know what's funny? Um, Paris. Somebody sent me a screenshot. This is before I start this news. This is completely non sequitur, to be upfront. Paris, somebody sent me a screenshot of, of Misfit and Miko. <laughs> Misfit and Miko. And was like, hey, <laughs> have you read this? So good. <laughs> like, it was just an unsolicited DM about your comic. I have no idea what the context was. I don't know why I got the message, but that was all they sent to me. And then they were like, gone. So you got fans? (laughs) You got fans. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it was truly the funniest shit. I, I, I have no context for it, but it did just happen to me. And I was just like, okay. (laughs) <laughs> sure um <laughs> it was it was truly the weirdest thing okay um let's actually get on to the news let's get right into the news oh god that was the worst thing i've ever done all right all right so uh how do we start this if you guys watch my previous video which i'm very pissed about that video that video has too many views my last video on this webtoon situation has 1,000 views. And, like, it's my worst fucking video. The worst fucking video I've ever made has 1,000 views. Anyway, if you watched my last video about this, you would have seen just the basic updates about what's going on. 
the co- what the person alleges in the contract and what the person alleges that the contract contains, etc. If you haven't seen it, that's okay. We're going to go over it here. So, over the last week, over the last week, really, um, the usual happens. Webtoon has been embroiled in chaos. In chaos, I say, right? The kids are, the kids are going wild out in, out in the streets. Um, they're, they're out there. They're posting the hippity-hoppity music, and they're saying that Webtoon's, like, treating them like shit. And, uh, and it, 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 it all really came, came from this one Reddit post that came up over the weekend. In fact, let me see if I have a link to it. Yeah, I do. I have a link to the tweet from Kara about it, so we're going to use that. Um, F- say Kara. They're not Kara. It's Ephemeris. Ephemeris follows me. Why do I talk about them like they're a stranger? Anyway, anyway, let's like do a quick, let's do a quick one. Let's just go over it really quickly because um, I think everybody deserves to just kind of see it and understand what the situation was. Okay. Uh, so I'm just getting the screen share up. Okay. Transition. <laughs> so here it is. Here's the screen. This is the this is the post. This is posted on Saturday, I believe, last week. I'm not sure of the exact date. I apologize. Um, but essentially, it goes like this: Beware the Webtoon Originals contracts. I'm going to read this whole thing, by the way. Beware the web. I'm going to read this up. The the, the main part. Beware the Webtoon Originals contract. Somebody said they were offered an Originals deal before. They've already had a job in publishing like regular book regular uh publishing in the, the, the traditional public publishing industry and so they were offered a contract from webtoon and they couldn't believe what they were reading so they contacted a few of their original a few original creators to see if their contract was in other people's contracts and they were shocked and appalled by what they saw and here's what they said they saw they said that in the contract said webtoon would automatically have the ability to buy 100 percent of my ip previous webtoon originals contracts didn't have this in their contract at all so i believe it's a new thing Apparently, this is so if any series happens to do very, very well, Webtoon can just snatch the entire IP out from under the creator for a very low fee. And unfortunately, this has already happened to some creators. Two, they allege that Webtoon would own their print publishing rights, right? Something that normally goes for five to six figures in terms of United Dollars, United States Dollars, United Dollars. Um, Webtoon would be paying them $2,000 for and um, would have automatic ownership and which is a huge ripoff. Three, Webtoon would own all merchandising rights. They wouldn't be allowed to make them merch of their own. They wouldn't be allowed to sell merch of their own. And then three, sorry, and four, and the most egregious thing in the claim is Webtoon would become their agent for print publishing and multimedia deals, which is incredibly unethical, which is true. Now, I also want to point out, this last one stands out to me because this last one, it looks like an antitrust problem. I had to I had to call an antitrust lawyer over the week. They're having to get back to me, so I need to like see you know what information I can glean from this. But this bottom one looks like an antitrust problem, and I don't know if that's okay because what that says there is insane. That last thing is insane. But these are the claims of an of a Reddit post where we got no evidence of what happened it's of of the contract or any other information. There was then. Another Reddit post, like a day later, um, <laughs> like a day later, and I'm going to just bring this one up. This was sent to me by um, um, <laughs> Ligus Squigus in the chat. Uh, thanks a lot for sending me the post. I, I got to speak to the creator um, who I, from which I gained a lot of information. But it's something I want to start by saying in this, po- in, this, in this call, in this stream. What do I call it a call? This post is, in my opinion... One, not very good. Like, I read this. The creator from this also sent me some documentation for me to read. I can't show you any of this because it's all off record. But I read this and, like, read their their, their contract, etc. And it, this is not what it seems to be. Okay, let's go back to the office. This is not what it seems to be. And I want us to start. I want to start with this second one because it's to me, it's a very easy conversation to have. So in this second post, this dude was talking about how Webtoon, they they shelled out money for a for a lawyer and to review their contract, and they realized that 
Webtoon has an option to purchase their entire IP. Now, I found out through talking to the creator who is behind this post that that was a lie. Webtoon doesn't have that in this person's contract. Oh, we'll talk about the main big post that started this shit in a second, but we'll start with the second post. From what I have been able to glean, from all the information that I gained from the original poster of this Reddit post, it is untrue that Webtoon is, una- is able to purchase the entirety of their original's IP. I have seen their contract. I've looked at it. At most, Webtoon can purchase about 40% of their IP at most. And in fact, from a conversation I had with an insider, Webtoon often only, um, only, I know who it is. (laughs) Webtoon often only, only agrees to, only ever really takes 30%. From an insider I know who says the typical is they take 30%. Now, I'm, I want to address a question before we go anything else. Um, from Ligus Squiggas, who would sign that? Well, Ligus, you often let um, your publisher to hold a certain percentage of your IP because that gives them the investment to invest in you further because then they don't feel like you're going to pull the everything out from under them. And even if you did take it away from them, any development costs that they put into you to allow you to develop your IP would then be recuperated by them if you were to, you know, let's say they helped you get big. They helped you get big with advertising and putting money behind you and all that shit. When you go and you sell the book rights, they at least get some of that money back. Stuff that's a lot more intangible than very direct assistance. That's what that's for. Okay? That's what that's for. Two, 100% is not even allowed. 100% is 100% allowed. IPs are often, total IPs are often sold and taken. Um, But in Webtoon has, Webtoon maintains, and this is something I got from, again, from a Webtoon insider. Webtoon says that they maintain that they only want a minority stake. I want to be clear. I'm saying all this stuff knowing that I'm going to have criticism of them, criticism of Webtoon later, but I want to just say things so that we are angry for the right reasons. Um, let's see, what else? Even 40% is too steep. Don't they have like 20% of an ordinary? Yeah, they had 20% of an ordinary. I have no idea what they currently own of the ordinary IP, but they used to own about 20%. They could own more. I don't know. I don't know what deals they have between those two. And like, we, and, and so people are still allowed to do things with their own characters on Patreon and stuff? Well, yes and no. Yes and no. It's a complicated situation. Like, you're allowed to do stuff on your, with, with, with your characters in certain environments, and you can carve those things out, but you need to directly do that. Um, the initial contract does not immediately give you the ability to do that. So you often need to do that of your own volition with the publisher by asking them to negotiate. And like, Web2 maintains that they always are very willing to negotiate with creators. That's what they say. And I'm here to say that I have also been very privy to multiple conversations from creators at this point about how Web2 is quote unquote willing to negotiate, but also takes a long fucking time to ever get back to you. So like, are you really willing to negotiate if it takes a whole fucking year or whatever to like deal with one part of a contract? I don't know. And like this is from, from the Webtoon Insider even said, yeah, we take a long time because entertainment law takes a long time. But like this is an entertainment, like this is like at the scale at which we're at and as somebody like me who has experience with entertainment law at this point, a little bit, I'm not a lawyer, but experience with dealing with it from like my regular job like, yeah, stuff takes a while. Stuff can take two, three years to, like, resolve. But at the scale at which we're at, like, stuff shouldn't take more than a couple months. So taking so fucking long is kind of, is like, it's almost on purpose. It's, 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 it's basic capitalistic behavior, right? It's, 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 it's yeah, it's, it's just, it's kind of on purpose. Um, I think, it, I, and let's see. From Paige, I think that's part of their strategy, honestly, to tire people out negotiating back and forth with them. Yeah, I I would assume so. The thing is, like, you need to remember, entertainment law and entertainment, like, contracting and stuff is built for a different group of people. And I'm going to say this just so we're all both aware. Entertainment law is built for companies. It's not built for me and you, right? Like, I want you to, I want to take you guys back somewhere. So, back in the day, I once got a copyright claim for using a song on a video, right? 
I never mentioned this because I don't like complaining about copyright claims, but I called the company that managed the copyright for that song in the UK. I called them, I had a conversation with them, and I actually got that completely resolved and I didn't have to pay them a fee, but I did. Um, I had to pay them a percentage of revenue on that video. That video made zero dollars, so it doesn't matter. But, <laughs> but like that's what we negotiated, right? And like when we negotiated that, all of that negotiation basically came out as like them and myself having having a call. I called their lawyers. Their lawyers called me back. This stuff took a year to resolve. I didn't know it would take a year. But entertainment law isn't built for a person to communicate with a company or people to communicate with each other. It's built for lawyers to communicate with lawyers. That's what it's made for. Entertainment law is literally made so that lawyers talk to lawyers. And lawyers take a long time to fucking get, their, get themselves together. So they will like send the email and forget about it. And then three months later, we'll come back and they'll be like, that's normal. And they know how to like push buttons and call people and get stuff going because this is their industry and they probably know the law firm that works for the other entertainment company. And so like, while part of this is on purpose, right? It's them, it's them acting in a way that is, that is because they know that they're not beholden to you. They know they have more cards at play. Part of this is also legacy problems of an industry that is problematic, <laughs> to say the least. So I am putting that out there. Then, um, so other than the 40%, does Webtoon still take the merchandise rights? Yes. Does Webtoon take print publishing rights? Kind of. And I want to talk about that a little bit with this person's contract. Webtoon takes print publishing rights in like, in like the same way that, hmm, what's the way I put it? Webtoon takes print publishing rights in a really weird way. I, I don't have a, a, an, an analogy, but I'm going to give you, I'm going to explain to you what they do. Webtoon pays the really low fee because they don't actually buy your print publishing rights. They buy the rights to sell your print publishing rights to other people, which can also include Webtoon Wattpad Studios, but to other people, right? The idea being that Webtoon has experience in the entertainment industry. Webtoon knows the other studios. Webtoon, know, Webtoon can get you a better deal because instead of you negotiating as yourself, Webtoon is negotiating as the big, as the big dick swinging company, right? And so they can get you quote unquote better deals. They can get you quote unquote better deals, um, and like because of their position in the industry, that's what they're basically telling you to bank on by buying the ability to sell your 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 print rights to actual printers, right? That's what they're trying to do. That's what they that's what their position is on this. Um, so the low fee is because they don't actually buy the rights to just print your stuff. What they're doing is they're gonna go off and give your rights to like and like offer your rights to like Penguin Random House. And then Penguin Random House will give Webtoon a price. And Webtoon will bring a price back to you and be like, here's the price that we got for your book. Right? And then like if you say yes, everything goes ahead. Remember, Webtoon is a minority stakeholder in all of these situations. So unless you say yes. Nothing happens. Like, while they will, they're, you're giving them basically, what happens, what this contract basically does, it gives Webtoon care of your IP, as in like, it seems like Webtoon is essentially going to be the caregiver of your IP. They're going to be trying to find opportunities to develop it, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, nothing, ha nothing goes through without your yes, because you are the majority owner of the IP. They basically act as like a licensing company in that relationship. They act a little bit like a licensing company um, in my experience. And like in the experience of the people I've spoken to, that's often how their things are handled. Like that's, that's really it for that. Um, don't I get more big bucks if web... <laughs> Why is that Kofi thing still there? I need to get rid of that. But don't I get more big bucks if Penguin Random House approaches you directly? Yeah, theoretically. Theoretically, you do. Um, that's why Penguin Random House uh, made a big thing out of... Um, that's why Penguin Random House made a big thing out of making a deal with Webtoon because they wanted to essentially be able to like streamline costs is the best way to think about it. Like, they wanted to be able to streamline costs. And so... 
Um, that's what they're doing. Now, I'm just trying to like turn off a <laughs> <that> thing. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, like they find all possible offers to get a webtoon printed instead of you, so you don't have to do the offer offer yourself. Yeah, you see what I mean? Like that's what their that's what their their thing is. They're they're basically there to like take work like basically the thing we do all this work so you don't have to. Um, I love to know if they ever accepted a negotiated contract. Yeah, they have. They've accepted multiple negotiated contracts. Regularly, people negotiate with them. And you need to remember, this is about what you bring to the table and how much power you have. Like, if you're just Joe Schmo with no bros, like, you ain't got no power, yo. You know what I mean? Like, you're not the one who's going to enter the conversation able to push things back. But if you do, if you have the, if you have the dick swinging, then, like, you can a little bit. You know, I can't tell you people who I know who have had who have, who have gotten um who have done some contract negotiations, but I do know of people who have done some contract negotiations and like successfully gotten those signed. So it's not like they're impossible to work with in that regard. Now, that's just addressing the second post. Also, I just want to say for the person who made the second Reddit post on on about the webtoon contract purchasing the entire IP or whatever, um please do better about hiding your information. This is not me saying this is like a ha ha ha. I mean, like, please be safe. You put a lot of information out there and I'm recommending that you don't do that and that you clean up whatever you left behind because you, you put yourself in a weird position there, buddy. Anyway. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <laughs> that's all. I, it was a lot of identifying details. People need to learn to be more careful with their posts. Multiple people has, have identifying details. When people say things that are very identifying, and like, I've had a week of basically finding multiple people by what they've said to confirm certain information that I wanted to confirm quickly. So please be more careful, please. That, that's all. I'm not going to be weird about it, but I just want you to be more careful. Anyway, let's get to the main post. So. That main Reddit post came out. You've probably seen the Comic Speed article about it. You've probably seen a lot of stuff. Much like the Comic Speed article, I reached out to Webtoon about the main Reddit post. The one where the creator says that Webtoon wants to act as their agent, etc. Right? Um, I'll get to your question in a second, Seashell, in chat. I'll get to your question in a second. But I, I, I reached out to Webtoon. I said I reached out to Webtoon. I didn't reach out to Webtoon. On Wednesday, <laughs> in the middle of the day, <laughs> Webtoon just called me. <laughs> like, in the middle of the day, they just called me, which was a very big flex for me. And so I remember that, like, um, I gave my number to them <laughs> in a different conversation. <laughs> um, but, like, so I think they just called me because I was convenient, frankly. But Webtoon called me. And, like, I had a long conversation with somebody in Webtoon who worked relatively, at a relatively meaningful level at Webtoon. And then they sent me a bunch of information to follow up. And then they sent me the same document they basically sent Comic Speed. And I'm going, to, I'm going to bring this up to you because I think there is some truth in it. I also think that it's a little fucking weaselly. Just a little weaselly in the way it words things. And the person who sent this to me knows that I don't mean ill, but, like, I can't accept some of this stuff. I can't accept some of this stuff in the way it was worded and the way things were put down. And like the way it was talking about it, like it was like hyper obvious. So let's go through each of the posts, each of the things, because I want to put it up on my screen. It has been in my email all week and I just needed to paste it on Google Doc. Let's go through each one. Let's start with the first post. One. Um, <laughs> one. Webtoon gave me a background info checking bit. I'm not really going to go over it. But essentially, Webtoon says, hey, Webtoon would automatically, like for the claim of Webtoon automatically having the ability to buy 100% of, of, of a creator's IP for an incredibly low fee, Webtoon says, one, our contracts do not allow us to take, take, do not, do not allow us to take over a creator's underlying IP or exercise rights without additional negotiation and compensation. A big thing in the conversation with Webtoon was this constant thread of like, we people get paid, bro. People get paid, so it's not a problem. Like, that was a lot of what they said. Um, 
Webtoon has never attempted to buy 100% of the underlying IP from any originals creator, they claim. No, the only content that would be owned by Webtoon 100% would be a series that they, they produce and develop in-house. In all of their contracts, creators maintain ownership of their, of their IP. That means they have to own at, at over 50%. Often, 70% is what I was told is normal for a creator to of, of own of their IP. Um, <laughs> they wouldn't say how much. Like I was just told a number. I was told a straight up number about often how, how much they are usually exercise. Webtoon, Webtoon invests in a creator's work and prioritizes paying creators at every stage of the relationship, including payments to help creators start with a financial cushion, or and or production payments for work delivered prior to a series launch, all without any guarantee of a return or overall series performance. So this is another thing that Webtoon's very big on. Webtoon's very big on the of saying we invest in unproven IP, and so we're taking a very big risk. And often we don't get our money back. And so we make sure people get paid at every turn. And when we pay them, we make sure that they we make sure that we we make sure that they get paid early and quickly and efficiently. That's what they've been saying. So they're putting out me. And like they're not happy about 100 percent And that 100 percent IP, 100 percent of their IP bit is quite honestly, quite honestly, not good. <laughs> like the person who fucking wrote that, learn to read your contract. Unless you have, like, such concrete evidence, which, like, fair enough, right? You might have really concrete evidence here that I don't see, and I would love to see the concrete evidence. Again, all under NDA, all under, like, all, all off record. I have, like, I've seen more than enough contracts at this point. I'm not here to make your day worse. I just want to be able to visually see evidence because, like, nothing Nothing correlates with this 100% that I've ever seen. Nothing correlates with that. I've asked Webtoon's lawyer for a contract, for, for a version of a contract for me to review, for me to send to a lawyer. And I'm in, and like, I'm happy to look at any contracts and take and pay for them to be reviewed by a lawyer with my own money. No one else's money, all me, <laughs> you know? I'm happy to put that time in. But I don't think, I think in this very specific instance that some people just did not understand um, did not understand their contract. I think that's what happened. And that happens, but I think that's what happened. Um, you know, and I, I just, I would love, like, it, it's complicated, right? Because the way Webtoon words it in the contract is terrible. Um, it's absolutely awful. But it's the nature of contract law, of, of contract law and entertainment contract law, that it's worded the way it is. It's trying to be hyper-specific, but in a way that is incredibly obtuse to the average reader. So when reading it needs you to read like everything. It's why I tell you to read all of your contract. You need to read all of a contract to actually understand what it says. Um, because like, otherwise you're just picking up bits and pieces that don't, that aren't made to be read in isolation. Um, let's see. So I just wanted to see if there's anything anybody said that I missed. Uh, from Seashell Arts. So if, for example, you as an author find yourself an offer to get your webtoon printed and you accept, webtoon still gets some bag, even if you find the offer yourself, right? Yeah, they'll negotiate for that bag, but that's what the ownership means. That's what the ownership means. They're negotiating for the bag because the idea that they're bringing up is because essentially they're saying that, hey, um, we helped develop your IP. We helped you grow, blah, blah, blah. Use our platform. Um, I didn't understand most of mine yet. I accepted even though I had nothing to lose. Seashell. Okay, let's take a fucking minute. We're going to the forest. We're going to the fucking forest. I need to have a conversation with you. Seashell, where's my, where's my sad, angry emote? Where is it? Seashell, what the fuck? What the fuck? Why did you accept a contract you did not read? Read the fucking thing. <laughs> like, I'm actually so mad at you. I'm so fucking mad at you. Read the thing. Read. No, 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 no. Read the fucking thing. And then when you read it, if you don't understand it, find a lawyer. If you can't find a lawyer, find a trusted person who can you can extend the NDA to. If you can't find that other person, right, don't fucking accept the contract. Look, I understand that you had nothing to lose. I get it. I get it. But we're here in the fucking suicide for us because you shouldn't be... You shouldn't be goddamn signing contracts that you don't have full understandings of. What the fuck... <laughs> Don't do it ever, 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 
ever. I don't care if the contract is literally going to save you from death. Never sign a contract that you do not have a total understanding of ever. And if you do that ever again, I swear to fucking God, I will find you. Okay? Cool. Back to the goddamn office. My fucking blood pressure. The shit that you people type in this chat. It's like you're trying to kill me. Uh, <laughs> like, actually, what the fuck? Uh, okay, whatever. Moving on. Look, I'm not mad at you for accepting it, Tisha. I know you're just doing... I know you're just doing what you needed to do for yourself. I understand the decisions that you're making. I just know you deserve better. Like, I know you deserve better than that. Okay? I need you to understand that. <sighs> All right. Letting that go. Letting that go. I'm angry at all of you, frankly, because one of the fucking, okay, one of the most goddamn consistent threads of this research that took a week of my fucking life was that some of you, too many of you, do not fucking read. Like, I, I wanted to get mad about this later, but too many of you don't read. Please, please read. If you have comprehension problems, I am not here to shame you. Ask for help. But please read and understand and ask for explanation after explanation. This is a fucking entertainment law contract. Be a burden on the people that offer it to you because you deserve to have all of your questions answered. All of your questions answered. When you are making a deal with any partner, if there is anything in that contract and they have lawyers on standby like Webtoon does, get on their ass. Ask for a detailed explanation. Ask for a call. Ask for everything under the goddamn sun so that you understand what you're about to sign. And after you have all those conversations, take them to your parents. Record every conversation you have with these people. Record every conversation you have with them. Every single one. Document. Save. Look, keep and, 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 and keep that, keep that, keep those communications. These are not your friends. This is contract law. This is entertainment shit. Please do not be a dumbass and like not read, not understand. Sign something because you're like, well, it can't be that bad. And then like absolutely fuck yourself. And not in the good way. <laughs> never. Never, never, never. Never. You know, I signed a contract. I signed a contract with, with Taddy. You guys remember last week we did the BAM last year we did the BAM comics. Um we did the BAM comics sponsor for the comic contest last year, which is another one this August. We had the BAM comic sponsor last year, right? Remember that shit? He gave me a contract. Danny, he gave me a contract. I read that whole fucking thing. I read it top to bottom over and over and over before we agreed on any money to move hands. And I changed a few things in there because, you know, and he's, and, and you know, I, I should. And he's a guy I respect. He's a guy I like. Like outside of the contract situation, the owner of BAM is a friend, like a like a like a like a friend of a, like person to person. He's an intelligent man, but like it didn't matter that we were friends. I read that contract hard. When I work for any of my friends, every contract they give me, I read top to bottom because it's it it takes one fuck up, one wrong sentence, one lack of one one phrase worded just ever so slightly wrong because they fucked up to ruin your life. Like, it, that's all it takes. One extra zero and you're fucked. Because, like, I don't know if you know a lot about contract law in the UK, but where I live, contract law is, is basically, if you sign the goddamn thing, fuck you. So if you sign a doc that says 400% when they meant 40%, you're fucked. <laughs> Unless the, the other party's willing to be chill, pff, fuck you, bro. <laughs> like, honestly... <laughs> So, like, please, 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 please get help. But I understand. I understand, Tisha. I'm not here to drag on you. I'm dragging on everybody. Everybody that does this shit. Because it's frustrating. It's frustrating. The amount of conversations I've had to have that are just, you don't read. How do you find a lawyer to read a contract for you? There's different kinds of lawyers. Yes, but there are two types of lawyers that might be very helpful for you. You can find an entertainment lawyer who specializes in comic books and web comics especially. And there's, a, there's only a handful of those. They're very rare. I will admit that. Also, you can find a contract lawyer, a person whose job, who, who understands how to draft and create contracts. 
they won't be as good as the entertainment lawyer because they don't know all the lingo of the industry, but they won't know roughly what your contract is like, is like saying. If you can't find an entertainment lawyer who specializes in comics or just an entertainment lawyer who specializes in IP, like IP development, then you can just find a regular goddamn like contract lawyer. And if you can't find any of that, you can find a lawyer to refer, refer you to a lawyer. Lawyers are often really like ref refer each other and they will do it. If you are part of a union, if you're part of any union that has to do with art or anything, often art unions have a lawyer in them. And then Hika Tamika in Twitch chat posted a great link, the lawarts.org. It's mostly a United States thing, I believe. But lawarts.org is a legal referral service for lawyers in the arts. So for like media and stuff. Like, please do not put yourself in a bad situation. I know lawyers are expensive, but then you know what's more expensive than a lawyer? Being in the Uruchan video. <laughs> like, imagine that was you. Just think back to the Uruchan live stream where I talked about how she got fooled by a friend, a person she trusted. Imagine that was you. That should not be you. You don't deserve that. That should not be you. That you deserve so much better. Okay? She didn't deserve that. You don't deserve that. Like, <laughs> like let's be for real. For real, for real. For a fucking second, right? Oh my god. Okay, sorry. I got so angry. Okay, you're kind of lost, Kiki. So let me just keep let me just get you up to speed. Let me get you up to speed. Um so this Reddit post is a lie. The one that says, I just found out that Webtoon can purchase my entire originals IP for pennies. I'm gonna make absolute dog, dog shit and despite it. This Reddit post is partially a lie. It's not a complete lie, but it's partially a lie. It's a person misunderstanding their contract um and overstating the truth. By saying their entire original IP can be purchased for pennies is a lie. They know that they that 100 percent of their IP cannot be purchased. They know that. They even admitted that to me in our in our conversation. I can't show you them, but they did. So this this started out with a lie, right? This wasn't for Reddit Gold. I think the, the thing is, this person just had a very strong emotional reaction to the previous post. They had a very strong emotional reaction. They're young. They're 20 years old, for God's sakes. They're young. They had a very strong emotional reaction. Um, reaction to the pro situation. They felt cheated out of the thing that they've been working hard of. They felt like they were going to have their entire world taken off, taken out from under them, and they freaked out and they made this post. This person got caught up in 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 their own stuff. Do I know if they got in trouble? I don't believe they did. Nobody looked into their stuff. But I need you. I'm I'm saying the thing about how they need to be careful because I looked into them, <laughs> and I know who you are, <laughs> and I don't think that's good. My dude, that's not good. Like, I, I know who you are. And in part, it's your fault. In fact, in entirety is your fault. Please be careful. I'm saying this not as like a threat or a flex or whatever. I'm saying this as like a, when you type this shit out, which I have no problem with you doing, please be supremely careful. The reason why I reach out to people is because I literally have a card from the National Union of Journalists in the United Kingdom so that if people want to know if I'm a journalist or not, I can provide a card. I can provide a card, I can provide a certificate, I can provide an email from my, my, the National Union of Journalists that prove that I am a journalist and not just some fuck with, with, the, with, the, with, with an ego, right? I am a, I'm a member of the Union of Journalists. Please, 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 when people reach out to you as a journalist, ask for evidence. In the United States, they have journalism cards. In the UK, they have those too, but mostly we have emails from our unions as evidence usually from the NUJ so please look into that um this reddit post this one this one that like beware the webtoon originals contract it's in part a misreading and we're going to get into the rest of it because i just talked about the webtoon buying 100% ip i said webtoon's response to it and i said my opinion on webtoon's response to it i want to get to the next part of this um response and that was I can just show you the Google Doc, frankly. I can show you the Google Doc. Like, it's no big deal. Um, let me just zoom in. <laughs> let me zoom in and let me hide that. Um, okay. So. <laughs> let's go to the next. So, the next claim. Webtoon would own my print publishing rights. This is the po This is the claim that the post, that the actual Webtoon, the actual, like, Reddit post made. You can see it in the actual post. Webtoon's response to this is that Webtoon acquires an option to acquire the print publishing rights for a limited amount of time. 
but does not outright own the print publishing rights unless the option is exercised. So let's have a quick conversation. Right? When a creator, when when you sign the Webtoon Originals contract, you don't actually give them your print publishing rights. I said this before, but you don't actually give them your print publishing rights in any capacity immediately. What happens in the in the, in the initial instance is that you give them what's called an option. Okay? And I feel like I'm explaining this like I'm talking to a child. So forgive but forgive so forgive me if I sound like that. But I'm really not trying to. I'm just um I'm just trying to like Make sure I'm explaining this properly. Okay. So you give them what's called an option. Oh, God, I'm painting in black. Am I just dumb? Yeah, I am. What's called an option. Okay? You give web team what's called an option. I want you to think of an option not as like an actual purchase thing, but as the ability to make a purchase later. So Webtoon will pay you a fee for the ability to buy something from you at a later date instead of you being able to sell it to anybody else, okay? When the option is exercised, used, Webtoon will be able to buy a certain percentage of your, I, of your IP, of your intellectual property, right, right off the bat. Now, the typical percentage Webtoon can buy that I have seen in contracts is 30% as of recently, right? Webtoon says they often only stick to this. They can buy an additional 10% at a later date if they wish to, right? But to do all of this, they need to send you a, they basically need to send you a message that says, hey, I want to buy and I want to exercise my option to buy 30%. After three days, they'll purchase the 30%. They'll give you an amount of money. I've seen differing amounts of money. I've seen some as I've seen 15,000, I've seen 20,000, I've seen $30,000. So, you know, it's a range of amounts of money. The bigger and more impactful your IP is, the more money they can buy. And the 30% is permanent. This is a permanent IP X option purchase, okay? This gives them certain rights. It doesn't give them control over your IP as a whole, but it gives them certain rights, and it means that they, have to, they get to be in the room for certain conversations. So that's what an option is, right? Webtoon often pays you for this option like 2K. Okay? Oh, so Rainbow Pegasus. Hey, buddy. It's been forever. How are you? Are you good, bud? Good to see you. Honestly, really good to see you. I hope you're okay. I hope you're still writing. <laughs> I've never... I think about you often. I hope you're okay, bud. Do I think 2K is fair for an option? I have no opinion on this, frankly. <laughs> like, when you purchase this option, Keep going, I'm taking notes. When Webtoon purchases this option, we are able to buy actual ownership of your, like, of certain parts of your IP and certain things in your IP, right? Do I think 2K is fair? I don't fucking know. In Web, from Webtoon's perspective, it's an unproven IP that they're putting money into. So this is a big gamble and a risk. From my perspective, this is not enough money. But if, you, if it was up to me, my dude, if it was up to me, all of you would get a million dollars, but then there would be massive inflation and then the economy would collapse. And then like, I would be eating my, my McNuggets outside of, a, outside of a grocery store. So yes, if you give them the option, you've already said yes. The option is, is like a yes. Think of the option as a future yes, right? The option is a future yes. It's like a, oh, in seven days, I will die. In seven days, if you, like, it's like you're basically saying to them, hey, in the future, if you want to do this, if you want to do this option thing, go for it, bro. Take, buy the rights. And so what Webtoon does is they exercise the option and then they can just purchase 30% after three days of telling you they're going to exercise the option. And they can then buy a further 10%. From what I've been told, this 30% is the most common number. Okay? Okay. That's what an option is. I just wanted you guys to know. I Also, just for context, Options often contain certain rights within them. This is not a perfect explanation. This is like a how I understand it explanation, to be upfront. But they contain certain rights. So I've seen things like audiovisual AV rights in there. I've seen things like name and likeness. So it allows them to use your name in, and likeness in negotiations, I assume. Don't know what exactly they use these for. Um, I've seen other rights in there. Audiovisual just means like making like movies and video games and stuff. Like stuff like that. So they buy certain rights as, along with that. So they don't get all of your entertain all of your IP rights. 
Okay? This is very much a how I understand it. It's very much a crash course. Please go read into more of this stuff. Read lots of books about it. There's lots of great books about optioning in entertainment law, not just the concept of options. Because if you look up options as a broad thing, you'll find something to do with the stock market. Ignore that. Options in entertainment law. You look that up, you'll find closer to what you should be expecting. And you can like read about it if you want to. Anyway, um, Webtoon basically says, hey, they do not acquire the print publishing rights. They acquire the option. They, they, they do not, and they do not own those rights unless they exercise their option, which they, do, which they can just not do. For context, they regularly don't exercise their options, okay? Like, a lot of comics don't have their options exercised uh, that, are, that are featured, and it's not unusual. Like, but it also is not unusual for them to exercise it. It's like a 50-50, I guess, depending on how successful you are. Um, and it's a very standard traditional book publishing thing. So Webtoon is telling the truth about this. In fact, I want to be so upfront with you. Do you want to see where Webtoon's strongest claims are? These two. These two claims. The claim about the 100% and the claim about the printing, print, about the printing rights are quite literally the best fucking claims they've got. They came in, when I was calling Webtoon, I, I think the guy who I called Webtoon is watching right now. Hey, uh, when I was calling Webtoon, when they were calling me, they were like, so like, yeah, you know, these rights, bro. I was like, yeah, I get it, dude. Like, I know these are your strongest rights. But like, these these rights come from, an, the reason why the, the, the anger and the fear and the misunderstanding and the, 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 ang the, the sheer anger that I saw around this is not coming because of these rights. Like, lots of people exercise 100% purchasing power in the book industry. That is not a thing that is not, that never happens, right? In the actual book industry, some people exercise 100% pop, like, ownership rights. It's not unusual. But, like, <laughs> but, like, you know, in comics, well, you, even in comics, it's not that unusual. But, like, when we're talking about Webtoon, this is a company that, like, has given its creators especially an undue expectation. Traditional comics and books publishing from day one has been like, fuck you. And do you know what? We were fine with it. Like, we let them say that shit to us. We didn't stop them because, you know what? Fuck us. Right? Like, whatever. We don't have rights. They, they don't give a shit. Like, fucking whoever, whoever in publishing just feels like they can get away with what they want. That's typical publishing. Webtoon, on the other hand, has spent a lot of its early career saying three things. And I'm bringing these up from 2014 because I am petty to be upfront. Webtoon's main message to creators from the beginning of their career has been, we're here for you. We want to work with creators. We want to make a creator-friendly environment. Back in the day, they used to tell people that Webtoon Originals was a great way to get paid to be a creator, and it was a full-time job that meant you could support yourself. These are things they promised people in, in words that they said, in the marketing that they put out, and in the vibes that they put out to other people. They, 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 they made people feel safe and believe in them. And the last four years of Webtoon, the last four years of Webtoon has been a systematic shutdown of every attempt to make people feel like they can, they can be supported by the company. Maybe because they realize it doesn't make them any fucking money. And we can talk about that in a second. But that's what it's been. Kika, back in the day, they used to literally be like, you could upload once a month and make $2,000. This was before FastPass. This was before FastPass. You could upload once a month and make $2,000. That's what they used to promise. When they work with DC and they work with other publishers, they pay line artists four grand a month for submitting five pieces at 800 for just line art. For just line art. <laughs> they have created a mental framework. And this is the thing that companies do a lot. They create a mental framework of like you feeling like you can be supported by the company. When really, that's not how that shit works. Yeah, Demi remembers what I'm talking about. When the guy who worked at DC, who worked on Vixen, came into my comment section to try and fucking own me, and I proceeded to dis I proceeded to engage in the most toxic behavior I have engaged in on this stream and kept up in my entire life. <laughs> like, like it, just, it, used to, it used to be different back in the day. They used to make you feel different back in the day. Um, and like, they, they had a very strong parasocial relation. They, they created a very strong parasocial relation between us and 
web, between us and the company webtoon. We love the company. The company. <laughs> is this an intensification of pay thing like TikTok? No, it's not. Okay, so let's go back to the whiteboard. Actually, give us a second. Let's go back to the whiteboard. Let me teach you guys a little thing about startups because this is going to piss me off, but I need to tell you this. Okay. So, in traditional business, right? When I need to, why am I using my mouse? I have a drawing tablet, you know. I have the technology to be engaging with this on a higher level. And I'm drawing with my fucking mouse like an animal. Like I was just released from the zoo. Where the fuck is my mouse, actually? My, my drawing pen. Where's my drawing pen? Oh, it's a god. Okay. <laughs> this is why. This is why I was drawing. I was like, why am I drawing with my mouse? Oh, yeah. I lost my pen. God, I'm basically one of you guys. Um, no, I'm not. I'm not an artist. Don't call me an artist. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, so, here's the thing. In current... In the current... Um, in the current uh, system of business that we've been engaging in for the last 20 years. Let's say this is like business one. Business one doesn't make money. Business one has an idea that they think could make money, right? Let's say business one's idea is selling cookies to kids. They think if they sell enough cookies to kids, they could make infinite, they could make a ton of money. So what business one will do is they will go to VC to this company called a venture capital firm. Venture capital is a company that literally puts money down for business ventures. That's what it is. They give you money. They go to venture capital and they go, hey, I have this great idea for selling cookies to kids that will guarantee me billions of dollars, but I need to kind of ramp up my business and make enough cookies so that I can like stabilize. And then after that, the billions will come rolling in. VC company gives, com gives business one, millions of mucho mucho grande dollar mucho dinero if you will to borrow a bart simpson phrase from the hit video game simpsons hit and run right vc company will give biz one mucho dinero biz one will then take that mucho dinero and invest it into the company and for the first couple of years biz one will never make a profit like for the first couple of years right? Biz One will literally lose money. Negative money. Okay? They will lose money most of the time. If you look up Spotify's earnings, Spotify has literally never made a profit. Spotify's been a company for almost 20 years. They have never, ever, ever made a profit. <laughs> they've never made a profit. They have a, they have a stranglehold on the music industry and they've never made a profit. Because VC companies think that eventually Spotify does some, hits a certain stage, they will make mucho dinero, right? They're all banking on year four, where, Spot where the company will start making mucho dinero. You see what I'm saying? As the graph goes up, when the line goes up. So why am I saying this about TikTok and about Webtoon? TikTok and Webtoon seem to be companies that have come through this, this gauntlet. T t webtoon more with an internal funding system and tiktok more with the government with the with the chinese backed uh funding system but essentially these comp a, mil a million is nothing a million is fucking nothing it's not a million dollars they're giving them they're giving them billions of dollars Billy with a b okay b on my ice on my wrist billions in my pocket that's what they're giving these fucking dickheads right billy they're giving them billions of dollars. And so when they hand over this billies, billions of dollars, they invest this money knowing it's going to go to a loss. And initially, because the company is trying to gain a lot of, a lot of positive vibes, from year one to year three, as they're still making a loss, they're just giving money away. They're just giving money away. They know it's not going to be long-term tenable, but their goal is to, get what's, to hit what's called critical mass. Okay? Critical mass. And that's a big word. Oh God, this is the wrong color. I, cho I chose the eraser. Why did it do this to me? Oh, fuck. This is the worst. Okay, whatever. <laughs> I'm just going to fill it. Anyway, their goal is to hit critical mass, right? The company's goal is to hit critical mass. What's critical mass? Critical mass. Oh God, that's the thinnest brush. 
Critical mass. This is like such. This is just a business class, dude. Critical mass is basically a point in a business's lifetime when they have enough of an audience, right, that relies on their product that they can just price hike and they can just do whatever they want. Think Netflix. Netflix literally wasn't making money until that one year when they suddenly went, yeah, no more password sharing because they hit critical mass. They had millions of clients, millions of clients. So they knew no one was going to leave. So they could, just, they could just tell you to stop sharing passwords. What were you going to do? Leave? No, you're not. So they hit critical mass. And then now they make mucho dinero, right? In Webtoon's case, it's about the reason they spent all that money initially is because they wanted to get what's called monthly active readers, more daily active readers. They wanted to get that number high. Now Webtoon's monthly active readers are about 100, like just shy of 100 million people show up every month to read a Webtoon at least. So they've almost hit critical mass. And so like Webtoon doesn't give a shit anymore. They've hit that number. They've spent money to hit this number. They've hit that number. Now it's time to get the mucho dinero. Now it's time to make the money, um, to make the big cash, to make um, el grande pesos. You know, like, <laughs> that's all my Spanish. To make el grande pesos. That's what they're fucking doing right now. So that's what's happening, okay? That's why you're seeing them implement all these new different ways of making money into the platform. That's why they're pushing ways to essentially offload the work of paying creators to the reader. That's why they're doing all of this because critical mass, mucho dinero. Okay? Okay. That's why Fast Pass is seven coins. <laughs> Ella, also, hey, Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Yes, ask me a question, son. Ask me a question. <laughs> I'm trying to fucking teach class, but sure. No, no, ask the question. Oh, j fine. Just DM me the question. You have my Discord. Anyway, <laughs> I raised my hand before I thought of it. God damn. God damn. It doesn't matter what school you go to, man. There's always one of them. There's always one of them. <laughs> anyway. So the Webtoon livable era, wage era was pre-critical mass, and the Peanuts wage era is post. Yeah, like that's how most companies operate. They want to make you feel comfortable because then they, they, they push out competition. I want you to think of the comic landscape back when Webtoon started, right? I want you to think of the comic landscape back when Webtoon started. Webtoon came into the space. What was around? It was Webtoon. It was fucking Smack Jeeves. Um, who else? Comic Fury. Drunk Duck and their awful website. Look, I'm being a dick. I don't, they're, not, they're not that bad. They're doing a good thing for the community. Um, Drunk Duck. I guess Neo Geo Cities, Neo Cities may have existed at the time. That's it. Oh, Hiveworks, who which was which was invite only, invite only. Oh, Tapas that just started the year before, two years before Webtoon came in, twenty fourteen. Tapas had just started. Ink Blazer. So that's what we used to have. Ink Blazers. That's what we used to have. Seven, and then you had like Manga Decks and all the scanlation sites, and like I think we had like one or two older sites, and I don't even remember anymore. It's been that long, but. Those are your options, right? Those are the places that you can get free hosting or you can host your own goddamn website, say screw it, and figure out how to do web hosting. In an era when web hosting was disturbingly difficult. Yeah, Tapas is tapastic, Olaf Femi. Um, in And back, back when web hosting was disturbingly difficult, right? Um, WordPress does not count. Like, that, that, is, that requires technical knowledge. And, in an era, and back then, it wasn't as plug and play as it is now. It's like a lot, it was a lot worse. Um, um, one second, I'll get to your question, Blue Mouse. But like, so back then, that's the industry Webtoon came into in the English-speaking market. An incredibly competitive space, right? They had a lot of competition. How do you edge out competition? Well, <laughs> pause. How do you get rid of competition? Well, one, you can uh, offer a better product. Like, you could just do that. That's what Apple does. Like, say what you want to say about Apple. Apple offers a product that is way, way better than most competitors in the, in the laptop market. They have the best laptop. So Apple literally, like, pushes competitors out by offering the best laptop, right? But that's really, that only works for so long. Eventually, enough people would be done with you, right? Enough people will be done with you. Um, then, like... Then the, there's another way to get to, to, to beat your competition. Offer a better product that is impossible. Offer an impossible product. 
That's one of the best ways to be your competition. In modern capitalism, it's what you have to do if you want to win without any work. Offer a product that is impossible to match. And how do you do that? Well, all your competitors are of similar size to you. You can either get a bunch of VC funding that allows you to take over, or if you're like Nick, if you're like Webtoon, you've got a dad. Go to your dad. Open his wallet. Take his money. Because your dad's going to make sure that you can get, you can keep yourself fed. And he's going to offer you millions upon millions of dollars. Run light. Run narrow. Use the least amount of staff possible. Abuse your staff if you can get away with it. Making one of them literally cry. Because it doesn't fucking matter. Run as thin a light as possible. While they weren't explo exploiting their creators, quote unquote, they were exploiting their workers. They were underpaying. They were overvaluing themselves. And they were over-investing, knowing full well they weren't going to get the same level of returns. They just knew that. They were offering things that made people feel like a work environment was somewhere they would want to be in, though. They were offering, like, this is back when Google used to have slides. Remember when, you guys remember that? There was an era when Google had slides in the office, and that was a big thing they advertised, right? That's... That's the that's the that's the initial growth phase. You offer an impossible product. You pay comp you pay co you pay your employees too much money relative to their job or too little money with a ton of shares. You pay you you offer your 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 clients too good of a deal. Remember when back when Amazon Prime came in and it was like crazy good and Amazon prices were insanely low compared to everybody else that they were basically taking a loss on every product. You offer an impossible product. Right, just to, I'm I'm saying in multiple ways just to make it clear. But when you offer this impossible product, like it's impossible to compete with you. So your competitors either go bankrupt trying and need to go find their own business daddy, a la Tapas, right? Or your competitors give up, and then one day you look around, and you're the only one left. It's just you. That's how these companies create like that environment where they can take advantage of that, right? Amazon still gives me same day packages. I don't use it because it's bad for the environment and bad for people, but yeah, it is a thing. Um, but like, that's how companies work. That's how companies do all that. When they hit critical mass, they just start doing this all together because the closer they get to critical mass, the less they need to be nice to you because where are you gonna fucking go? Anyway, Blue Mouse's question. Maybe it's a dumb question, but after critical mass, is it possible to make live um, make a living, like a living which is an original or never again. Usually after critical mass, companies will never go back to policies that were good for their end clients because they're too big to care. They were good for their, for their, um, for their, for their, 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 what we call suppliers. So think of a creator as a supplier than as a client. Usually companies will never treat their suppliers good. Think of companies like Boeing, for example. Boeing became like a symbol of, of aviation and I need you to know they became that by basically nickel and diming half of their suppliers like from the moment they, be, they hit critical mass and were the number one company to go to other than Airbus. So, I'm sorry, that's just how that goes. Um, I'll see. Some Rainbow Pegasus. Question before we move on with the Webtoon Clamps. Nan, here's my question. So, I just realized I just sat down and gave a, a fucking lecture about, <laughs> about, about goddamn, like, Business development. <laughs> guys, you better subscribe to you guys subscribe to my Patreon. You better get people to subscribe to my Patreon. Cause like I can't live like this. Like I need to, I need something. Anyway, here's your question from Rainbow Pegasus. The statements made by Webtoon goes in direct contrast to what the Reddit posters were making. However, these Reddit posters also said that they hired lawyers to take a look at their contract. It might be a misunderstanding of miscommunication, miscommunication, but regarding that this is their IP or baby, wouldn't it be fair to assume that they understood something in the contract felt very unfair to them? Yes. Yes. Rainbow Pegasus has hit something in the nail on the head. I was going to get to this later, but you, you're hitting me early, so let's go with that. Rainbow, you are so right. Because the thing is, it, they may have misunderstood the contract, and they had the lawyers explain things to be better, but they're right. Like, the, the problem with these posts is that the details are wrong. But the problem with these posts is that they are on an ethereal, like supernatural level, correct. They know, they know, they know full goddamn well that like something is fucking wrong because something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong with the state of the environment that we're entering into. Something is wrong with the companies and the ways that they treat people. Something is fundamentally wrong. 
with like this industry, right? And the way the primary monopoly in this industry, Webtoon, operates. But the contract information that they have talked about, they were wrong about what they were angry about. Because these things are, um, are, are not evil or hidden. Their spidey senses were just tingling. And so when they saw these things that were not like that confusing, but felt wrong, they were like fundamentally right. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, it just became so British in that moment, man. It just became so British saying, you know what I mean? <laughs> also, yeah, Alafemi said, trying to become a monopoly. Yes, that is how monopolies form, Alafemi. You are incredibly intelligent. That 1996 on your, on your name really isn't a lie. <laughs> Big picture right, details wrong. Always the problem of any person who is an artist. Like, <laughs> it's really sad. Um, also, uh, can I just talk a little bit about this next point? I want to get a little bit on with the contract with this Reddit post reading. Let me talk about it. Artists are not dumb. They're just, they have a different set of skills and talents that they, that they use. They've worked really hard for a certain set of skills. You can't know everything. Like, look, I spend my time to know everything. I can't draw. So what does that tell you how much of your brain drawing takes? right? Like I'm learning to draw right now. And drawing is taking so much of my brain. When I sit down to draw, I feel like I'm about to die. <laughs> it's so alien to me. So like, this is not me attacking people and being mad at them in like a, you're stupid. I never think, that's a lie. I never think in a way that is meaningful that people are stupid. Like I think you're stupid and like a, I'm mad at you. Why did you fucking do that? You know, when you get mad, you're like, don't be an idiot. But like, I don't think you're stupid as like a fundamental person because I don't think you're the problem. I don't think you're the problem. I think this industry is the problem. And I think this industry has so many problems. Thomas, shut the fuck up or else I will get your partner to smack you for me because you're not stupid. <laughs> God damn. <laughs> you're not stupid, okay? Jesus Christ. Anyway, where was I? It feels like every few years when people actually read TOS on art websites and freak out about normal class. Yeah, it's it's that. It's it's just people not fully understanding what they've given themselves into. But they're big picture right in that the industry shouldn't make them feel like they're looking over their shoulder every goddamn day. Like people shouldn't feel like that constantly. The problem is capitalism, it's too soon to say the capitalism thing. We we get there at the end, okay, Kiki? Come on. Capitalism bad the webcomic show is not what is not where we should start. We end there. We start with me being mad <laughs> about something. We let me cook. And then when I when I'm mad enough, we get to say, ha, capitalism. Am I right, boys? And then like I get away with it. Scott free. <laughs> oh no. I just realized, like, I'm just thinking about the fact that I just spent my time talking about, talking about goddamn, like, capitalism and business studies. Like, there better be people here. Y'all better be here watching me talk about business studies. Because I'll be mad if you're not. Okay, there's 30 people. Cool, let's go. Um, <laughs> let's go, gamers. Drop, you know, if you do the heart react, I can see it, by the way. So thank you for the heart react. Um, anyway, more importantly, um, I just don't like, look, I just, I don't, I don't have all the answers, right? I think creators are incredibly intelligent people, but I don't have all the answers. At the end of the day, you need to put yourself in a position where you feel like you understand what you're working with. And that requires you to be a little bit more discerning about what you choose to work for. Okay. Now I'm going to take like 20 seconds to do an ad break an ad break. Not like a, not like a Twitch stream ad. Okay. Like a me ad. Because I have no Twitch streams. Okay, cool. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the ad break section of the channel today. Did you know that one in five creators has no data for their work, right? They, they have no data for their web comics. They understand none of the information about the, the way that their web comics, you know, grow and change over time. This is because the leading platform in web comicsology, um, Webtoon, does not offer data. Well, 
Worry no more about your plight, dear young viewer. Worry less, okay? Worry less and understand that there is a solution for you out there. For me, for you, for all of us, okay? It's called, this is the least flashy thing I've done in a while. Can we fight Creole? This is awful. But it's called Webtoon Studio. Webtoon, actually, no, it's called Creator Studio for Webtoon. But I like Webtoon Studio better. It's a funnier name. But it's called Creator Studio for Webtoon, okay? Creator Studio for Webtoon is, oh, wait, hold on. Let me get the Wii, 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 Wii Sports Resort music going. <laughs> One second, okay? <laughs> um, uh, we. Uh, we sports resort music. <laughs> what the hell is that song? Okay, one second, one second, one second. Is it not gonna play? Falls während des Spiels. Oh, this is the like intro. Okay. Anyway, get yourself web creator studio for web two. How do you get it? Well, you can just go to my Discord. This is a Reddit post about Creator Studio for Webtoon. I'm actually looking for beta testers still, so it's really great. We're gonna open beta really soon. It's a great little tool. I want you guys to get access to it. We've, we're fixing all of it, so it works with the current Webtoon, and it's gonna be great. And I think that you guys deserve to have data about your comic, so when you're trying to sell yourself to creators, to other studios, to publishers, to whatever, you don't wanna make a deal with Webtoon for like the 500th time. You wanna make a deal with somebody else, right? Here's a great tool that's gonna help you do that. Creator Studio for Webtoon. It's something that I fucking made. It works for all Canvas comics, every Canvas comic, and if it doesn't, you know, work with me. Also, your money on Patreon, because then I can fund all this shit. Patreon.com slash webcomics hub. This all cost me money, God. Anyway. <laughs> all right, intermission over. Thank you for staying for the short ad break that is me talking about this stuff. Now back to the back to the rest of the show. <laughs> After a few weeks of losing subs, I changed my icon to be a hornier one and I'm gaining subs again. Thanks, Webtoon Creator Studio. And thank you, random citizen. <laughs> thank you. If you wish to have access to all this data that I just showed on the screen, and there's a lot. We have all your common data. We have lots of cool data that I would love to show you in the Discord. Um, DM me at Nen Comics on the Discord. <laughs> and I can help you sell your IP by showing you data that helps you sell your IP. Lots of people have already made great decisions. Kylie Blue says that it helped them change their logo to a hornier one. I'm going to pretend like Paige Critchlow um, decided to run their Kickstarter because of the data that we showed them. Is that true? Who knows? <laughs> and I'm saying it because this is capitalism. <laughs> Anything to help creators. No, for real, anything to help creators. Like, I actually do feel that for real. Anything to help creators. I'm spending my own money because I think it's worth it, and I think you're all worth it. So you should think yourself worth it and get a creator studio, creator studio for Webtoon. And give me money on Patreon. A lot of money. Helps me fund all these projects. Oh, you did? Wait, you did? Yo, let's go! Let's go, guys! Paige used the data to, to do their Kickstarter, and it worked! Paige's Kickstarter is, is popping off. I was so right. You know, you know what? Maybe I am a genius. <laughs> that was actually really helpful. I'm so sad that data is going to be going away soon, Paige, but I'm super glad it helped you. Um, I'm super glad it helped you. <laughs> it's really sad that data is going away soon. It's actually so depressing. But we have the other data. That's still useful. The daily stuff is great. Um, I changed my logo from this one to Mako. People love it. But views are about the same. Thanks, Web2 Creator Studio. <laughs> Thank you, random citizen. <laughs> it's going away because of a change in the way Webtoon's API works. It would be great if Webtoon would work with us so we could offer you a better product. But for right now, with what we're doing, um, yeah. Anyway, back to the rest of the video. And I could stop doing my intermission for a second. <laughs> and I can talk about what I want to talk about. Okay, so can we talk a little bit about the merchandising one? No, they're not accessible. I need to talk to them. I'm gonna call them again, see what they can work with. We'll see. Anyway, let's 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 talk a little. Let's go back to what we were talking about. Back to the story. So we were in the middle of talking about Webtoon's response to the original Reddit post. Reddit post I'm talking about in specific is this one, the one originally titled, um, where is it? Originally titled, "Beware the Webtoon Originals Contract." 
Webtoon's follow-up response was then to talk about merchandising rights. Now, I want to say that I spoke to, when I was speaking to Webtoon on the phone, off record, I can't quote them, but I can say that, I can say that, you know, Webtoon says that their merchandising rights laws are not crazy bad. And I have thoughts. We'll get to that. Webtoon, so in the Reddit post, it claims that Webtoon would own all my merchandising rights. I wouldn't be allowed to make merch of my comic, of my own comic. Webtoon says that they may seek exclusive merchandising rights in order to develop merchandising deals from the creator's behalf. Ownership does not change that this is a license through which the creator has paid royalties. And it's a mutually, it's a mutual merchandising licensing agreement. Now, when I was speaking to, I'll get to that question in a second, Hika. When I was speaking to Webtoon, they said this. The reason they take these rights is because people who print merch, like made by made by Hello or like all the other license, all the other print, all the other all the other IP companies that do all this like IP development, they want those rights because they they don't want to be competing with the creator on the same IP on the same merch, right? And also because it get, helps them guarantee certain amounts. Like Webtoon doesn't always want the creator designing. Webtoon also doesn't want the creator designing the merch. Because designing the merch would basically like cut the merch producer out of the a piece of the pot. Like let let me give you an example. Let's say Webtoon agrees to the merch company to pay them for the merch company to pay Webtoon forty dollars to pay sorry to pay the web, the merch company forty dollars for every hundred dollars that the merch makes. Right, forty dollars for every hundred dollars hundred dollars the merch makes. The merch company is taking that forty dollars because they they designed the merch and they printed the merch, right? They designed and created the merch. If the creator were to make, for example, design the merch, suddenly the merch company can only take 30% for making the merch. They would have lost the design permissions and they would have also they've lost the design money. And they would have also like they may have gotten a product that they could work with in that, like, you know, the creator designed something that was possible for them to for them to print, right? But that creator wouldn't have made something that was optimal for them to make or print. Think of it like this: I can design a really kick-ass shirt, hoodie, sweater, whatever, right? But the printer, that wasn't that wasn't a plate. That was my 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 goddamn mic arm. But the printer has like things that they can do easily and things that are complex, right? When they're working with, if if they design their own merch, they'll design the merch to they design if they design the creator's merch for the creator, they'll design merch that's easy for the printer to print and make and produce at the lowest cost. If the creator designs the merch, it kind of it could skew that pricing, and also again they lose that ten percent that extra $10 that they would have gotten for having designed the merch too. So it's not really in the apartment complex. It's actually quite simple. <laughs> anyway, it's not really in the, in, the, in the merch company's benefit to do this. But also, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit, the company Surge is a company I want to talk about at this time. At this time, I wish to speak about Surge licensing and who they are. So, you've probably never heard the word Surge in your entire life. You probably don't know who they are. This is Surge Licensing. This is the company that handles Webtoon's IP licensing. So, they get Webtoon IPs developed into TV shows. Like, they're the ones who basically handle that part of the work, right? Um, Webtoon offers you all this licensing work. And remember how earlier I said Webtoon acts as, a, as like a licensing provider for you, a licensing manager? They offer a lot of this through Surge the leading IP development agency. This company also works with the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and a few other people, but they work with Webtoon. That's one thing that they do. And from what I have been able to gather, part of your issue might be coming from here. I don't think Surge is evil or anything. I don't know enough about their internals, and I'm not here to call them out. But I'm here to say this is who's actually doing a lot of your IP licensing work, right? Like, getting, like shopping around to different people and seeing what can be developed from it. So just be aware of that. This is not me like doing a boogeyman. This is me giving you straight up info with no, con with no additional context and no emotional like feelings around it. Just be aware this company exists and is handling a lot of Webtoon's IP development, meaning that it's going to be handling a lot of the feature creators' IP development. That's all. That's it. Moving on. Now, the other thing I was told by Webtoon, and this is a question I want to answer from Hika, right? From Hika, do they stomp out the right to make e-commerce artist alley merch? Yes or no? From what I have been able to gather, and from what I was told in that call, 
if it's a small, low-volume merch thing, they're not really going to be weird about it. They don't want to get in the way of little things and small pieces of merch, they said. Now, in, in practice, is that true? The creators, it's up to the creators to talk about it. But that's what they, how, what they put forward. They said, hey, look, you know, if you're going to be selling a couple little plushies that are too custom that you hand, you, maybe you, you got like made by yourself, I'm not going to be weird. But it's a little weird for me to be selling a book as a company, and then you, the creator, are going to selling a different book. That's how they put it. Okay? They also were like, it's a little weird for me as a company to be making you, like, T-shirts, and then you sell T-shirts that compete with my T-shirt. They, won't, they, they will interfere with print runs, but they will interfere in small merch things is what they said. How that works in practice, though, I do not have evidence of. He was very, they were very resistant to give me information. They were very resistant to tell me specifically examples. Maybe because I didn't ask it well. Maybe because I didn't frame the question well. I want to be very clear. Sometimes these conversations, I'm the problem. <laughs> you know, like sometimes it's just me, dude. It's my fault. Maybe I didn't ask the question properly, but um, they were not, they were not, kind of, they did not have details to give me regarding examples of this. To be upfront, I should have followed up with questions about it, but I didn't as well. That's also on me. I didn't follow up with that, but I'm putting that upfront and personal. If I if they do get back to me, which they probably will after seeing this, we'll have a conversation. Um, but the merch one is like for me, it's complicated for me because like, if the, if Webtoon is poorly using your IP and not developing merch for your IP, I, then I think it's bullshit for them to take those rights in perpetuity or in a, for as long as they own them for it. They don't take them in perpetuity, but for as long as they own them for it, they're not developing your IP. Having these merch rights is bullshit. But I do know that like. If they never exercise them, that they expire sometime after your last episode is over. I believe that's after you upload your last ever episode. So, whatever. Although I do know the timelines can be pretty long. Although I've also seen that they've been negotiated, they have been in a position where they can be negotiated down. So, I've heard of them being negotiated down. I don't know if, they're, if that's a con common thing. I only heard from one person. So um, it's not a big deal, but yeah, they do take merch rights. They do. They take they take the right to shop your merch around and through their through their licensing company. Um, so yeah, they do. Freaking ads, <laughs> uh, guys! Laugh with the Twitch stream, the Twitch viewers, and their ads. I say this as if YouTube doesn't have ads right now. <laughs> they probably YouTube probably get an ad. Anyway. Final Reddit claim, Reddit claim from the from the from the initial Reddit post. Reddit. Oh my god. Reddit post claim. Webtoon would become my agent for print publishing and media multimedia deals. All right, let's fucking talk about this. Because I actually have a lot to say. Okay. One, this right, this, 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 this claim. This claim is insane. Like, I don't think you guys understand what this claim really is saying. Because we're only thinking about it from a creator lens, but like, ignore the creator lens. I have to, I hate to say it. We're gonna fucking ignore the creator lens. Let's talk about this. This claim is FDC, like, activatable. Like, I feel like I can, I can feel the United States FTC's eyes glowing. Fucking, <laughs> what's her name again? Who's the current chairman of the FTC? Fucking Lena Khan. I can feel Lena Khan's fucking eyes just like f glowing. Just like, ah, oh, you, 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 you wish to do this? Oh, by the way, Lena, big fan. Mm, uh, one up for you. Thank you for holding companies, resp companies responsible for the shit. Um, this, guys, is the face of a true hero right there. Anyway, <laughs> what's the FTC? The Federal Trade Commission. What did they do? What does the Federal Trade Commission do? They literally regulate business activity. They make sure that, they, one of the big things they do is they make sure that companies do not act in a way that is considered monopolistic. Case, let's, here's a great example. Back in the early 2000s and even now, Microsoft used to install Internet Explorer into your computer and then make it really fucking hard to get rid of Internet Explorer. I'm obsessed with her. Anyway, make it really fucking hard for you to, to, to 
to get rid of an Internet Explorer, right? They would find ways to to make it difficult to download Chrome or other browsers. They would defame them. They would they made they pre-installed them into your devices, so it meant that you were forced to use it. And they even made it really hard to switch to a different browser. That is what is called an anti-competitive behavior. You should not stand in the way of your consumer being able to access other materials just because they just because yours exists too. They are allowed to just go fuck this and take something else, right? It's the, it's the reason why Apple it's, it's the reason why Apple is like is like in the in the hot water they're in. They engage in a lot of anti-competitive practices when it comes to repair. And anti-competition practices are very localized to the industry. What I mean is this, right? I'm opening paint again. I'm opening paint again. Am I what am I fucking pirate software? Like what is going on in my life? <laughs> what is going on in my life? What am I pirate software, dude? It's getting so bad. Anyway. Okay. So, let's talk about this. Let's say let's say there's two two places. Let's say there's like um hmm, what's the thing I can give as an example? That'd be really easy. Okay, cool. Let's say Webtoon is here, right? My pirate software error is going to be great. I'm, I'm really thinking about putting my face on stream now. It's becoming more of a thing. Okay, so let's say Webtoon, let's say Webtoon wanted to engage in two businesses. There's the, there is the, there's business A. There's, no, let's call it industry. There's industry A, right? And industry B. Indus B. Forgive my poor writing. Right? No, you can't go to the bathroom. Sit the fuck down. Anyway, let's say Webtoon wanted to engage in these two industries. Right? In industry A, Webtoon is one of hundreds of companies. Right? So they're trying to like, they're, they're just fighting their way through. They act a little bit weird. They do a lot of, they, they do a few things. Whatever they do in this industry, as long as there's all those competitors and they're not like, stealing from them or doing something particularly like bad often they will never get spotted but when webtoon is in an industry like industry b where they're one of the only people in the game their behavior can be spotted and what and, and what behavior that we're looking for is what's called anti-competitive behavior behavior that basically makes it impossible for a consumer to engage with the competitor's product okay so think um think Apple's, Apple's iMessage. Apple's iMessage is a great example. Apple has iMessage, a feature that is only available on iPhones, but does not allow you to communicate the same on the same level with, with, with your family who own other phones. That's a safety problem. It causes a lot of issues, right? But also, it means that if, if, in, in, if in like industry B, the, the industry of, 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 of messaging apps, Apple does this thing with iMessage. They make it impossible for newer messaging technology to come and succeed and prove to be better than them in the market, right? By basically blocking people out who use other devices, right? It's, it's a safety problem. It causes a lot of issues. It's anti-competitive. It's anti-consumer, right? They're doing something that basically makes it so that people, when, when if, makes it impossible for me as a, as a person living in a family of people with iPhone users to buy an Android device. Right? Or makes it hard for, for couples to have different devices. They're doing that on purpose, and that's not okay. It's an anti-competitive behavior. They can play, need to learn to play nice with the other companies in the industry. They did file a, they did file a suit against Apple for monopolistic practices in the iPhone market. They did do that. And let's say there's industry A, an industry that Webtoon is in, like, 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 I poorly explained this, but let me, let me try and go back. Let me go back. Let me start again. One second. So let me actually super simplify this. Super fucking simplify this. Remember when I said that Webtoon's got that fast, those fat stacks of cash, right? This is a brick of cash, by the way. They use it to do, offer what I call an impossible product. Ignore everything I said, just focus on this part. A po impossible product. What I mean is the Webtoon app gets to pay creators big money. Pay creators, pay big money. <laughs> oh, God. Right? And it gets to uh, basically take a loss constantly, constantly taking a loss, right? Webtoon even then proceeds to buy creators from other competing services, 
with impossible deals. So if you don't know about this, early on in Webtoon's career, they paid a bunch of people who made webcomics on their own websites to move everything over to Webtoon. All their comedy comics. So Webtoon would then buy other outside creators. Outside creators. And basically make it so that they're the only place that you can go to. Do this with contracts that are impossible for competitors to hit, to competitors to like, like engage with, and, and, and like impossible for anyone to be able to like match, right? This behavior is monopolistic. But it's not anti-competitive. It's just monopolistic. It's shitty, right? But if Webtoon did all of that and then at the end of everything, they told the creators, hey, here's a contract for you. You can't work with Tapas ever in your life. That's anti-competitive. You see what I'm saying? You see the difference? The, the first thing is monopolistic. It's swinging your dick of money. The second thing where you block people from being able to engage with competition is anti-competitive, okay? Why that matters is in this bit here, when it says Webtoon will become my agent for print publishing and multimedia deals, Webtoon is a fucking publishing company and a media company and a tech company all at once. So if they were, let's say I wanted to get a game made, right? Or let's say my deal was like, was like, was like with, with what you call it, with another publishing house in my city, Webtoon through Penguin Rant, Webtoon already had their own publishing arm until recently, the Webtoon Wattpad Studios publish, publishing arm, and now they're working with Penguin Random House hand-in-hand hand for a whole publishing division that they, that they can kind of manage. Webtoon comes with me to talk to a different publisher, right? They have to, because when, if they, if they, when they buy that ownership stake in my IP, they get to come with me to my conversation with my new publisher. So Webtoon comes with me to my conversation with that new publisher, right? Webtoon comes with me to that pub conversation, they can like, they just like exude a force upon this new person, this smaller, this possibly smaller publisher. So to make them take a worse deal for the smaller publisher because it's a better deal for Webtoon as a whole. They can do that. I'm not saying they do. There's no, there's no like documented evidence of them doing it, but they can do that because that is something that they have the power to because they're in the same industry and that's anti-competitive. So this claim about Webtoon being an agent right, would be insane. It would put Webtoon in a crazy level of power relative to every single person in their, com every single competitor they have. They would be not just swinging a dick, they will be swinging the biggest of dicks. Massive dick swinging to go for a million miles, right? This, this claim is the kind of thing that we would call Lena Khan about. This claim is terrifying. Like, forgetting the way it already fucks creators' lives over, it is anti-competitive in a way that is unusual and I have not seen in, in publishing in a while, right? And it's not true. It's not true. This is a misunderstanding of the options thing about how Webtoon will try and shop your print option around and your IP options around through surge licensing. It's a misunderstanding of that. Webtoon, having those option rights to be able to exercise their ability to find you deals is not the same as being your agent. I know why, the comp why the, it seems weird. The thing is, if you had no agent, Webtoon would fundamentally be acting like an agent because they would just be offering you a deal. They would be giving you no advice on that deal, but they would be offering you a deal like an agent would be getting for you and you would have no like representation to talk to with, about this with. Now, Webtoon would not act like that. Many creators come with their own agents, managers, blah, 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 and Webtoon works with those people and that's what they claim. And that's what I've heard, that they do work with those people. Somewhat, not always well. Um, but essentially, this is somebody misunderstanding the business partnership section and taking it to mean something that it doesn't. Now, this is the thing, this is the reason why if you, when you get published originals, if you are trying to get something good going on, get an agent, get a manager, get a legal representative for you. Because essentially, Webtoon, will put you in a position that will not be great because that's, that's what they're allowed to do under our current system that allows them to exploit people for their own gain because that's just the nature of capitalism. Um, it's not really a unique web to thing. It's just capitalism. Um, so, like, just be aware of that. That's what that last claim is. That's the entire claim section. Now, I want to say something before I go on into, like, a fucking spiraling rant. This, like me debunking this overall post is, does not change something that somebody said earlier. 
that Rainbow Pegasus said earlier. That while these, the, these details may not be 100% true, the vibes are off. The vibes are so fucking off. Like, beyond off. And, and, and it's because of the nature of, of the current state of comics, right? Every major player in comics, every major player in comics is a corporate entity trying to make their own cash. Every major player is doing that. And I think that, I think that the problem is there is no company that truly advocates for the things that creators need or want for, for very obvious reasons. Those companies have bottom lines. Creators don't own those companies. Creators don't own those companies. And I think that's bad. I don't think it's... Un I want to say something. When I say this stuff to you, this is not an unsolvable problem. This is a solvable problem. We have solutions to this problem, and it's a matter of time before we solve them. And I'm sorry for making, you, making it sound scary and uncertain because right now it is uncertain because we don't know what the next steps are going to be but i want it to be obvious and upfront but just because right now it is uncertain does not mean that forever it is uncertain okay and I, i'm sorry if i made you feel bad or exhausted or whatever i know you give me a lot of your patience and a lot of your energy but this industry is one better than it's ever fucking been and two might not need to exist in the way that it does for long and I'm sure that there will be solutions because one, I'm one of the people making solutions. Um, um, Reddit post, <laughs> lol. Um, I'm one of the people making solutions. And two, you know, we're, we're all working together for the betterment of ourselves right now. Like that's where we're at. It's me, you, all of us working together for the betterment of ourselves in this industry. Just because the biggest player isn't ideal, just because no one in the space is currently ideal, doesn't mean that it's never going to be good. It's better than it's ever been as an industry because we can finally make fucking money. And Hika, I hate to say it, it's better for creators than it's been in a long time. There are multiple ways for, us to, for this to no longer just be a passion project. I grew up with fucking Akewood being something that Chris Onside could basically make no money off. Even when he did the Dark Horse release, it basically made him no money, okay? I grew, up in, I, I grew up in the era when this shit didn't make cash, couldn't make cash, and wouldn't make cash. We live in an era where now this can be your full-time gig. But right now, the people that are at the helm of this industry just don't know, don't have, like, don't have your best interests at heart. And they don't for lots of reasons. One of them is Webtoon doesn't have your best interests at heart because they're a company, one. Two, because Webtoon... Has, is going to IPO at the end of this year or next year beginning. They're going public. They're going to be a publicly traded company to make billions of dollars, billions, right? And to do that, they have to be cut through. They have to cut corners because this is their growth year, okay? This is their whole phase. This is when they're going to be coming up big on that, on that greenback, on that moolah. And they can't be seen giving some of that cash that's supposed to be going to the investors to a bunch of sh schlubs, as they view it, or they might view it from a really, really top, top, top level way, um, and they, they just can't. They can't do it and also still make crazy record-breaking profits every year for the rest of their life because capitalism is fundamentally broken. They can't do it. Now, something that Ligus Quigus asked me, um, do I think they're moving towards something, something like in a certain direction? Yeah, they're moving towards the fucking corporatization of comics. That's just what's happening. The corporatization of YouTube happened a few years ago, and it's continuing to happen. The corporation of comic is continuing to happen. But what's really good about that, and I'm going to say something, I'm going to like put away my stuff, okay? I'm going to say something to you, very, very honestly. What is really fucking good about an industry that ends up going towards corporatization is that it means that there is more liquid ad revenue flowing in the industry. And why does that fucking matter? Why does that matter? It means that alternatives to, that, to these problems can arise very quickly, okay? Could arise incredibly quickly. Does my mic sound weird? I hope not. I'm doing like a big speech right now. Oh no, Rainbow. Oh, oh it's Rainbow Pegasus. Okay, cool. Yes, that is Rain. My, my anyway. Alternatives, alternatives to this industry can arise very quickly to fix several things. People who have who have better, shorter term, like longer term understandings of the industry and longer term visions can show up because that's what this industry is going to get because now it has the money behind it. Like, 
great example is what is Creator Studio for Webtoon, a tool that you guys have needed for your entire life. I'm not saying it's a plug. I'm saying it's a serious thing. A tool that, you, that creators have talked about for having basically the last five years. It exists now because we have more money in the industry. We have more people who care. Okay? Manta Comics it exists now because we have more people in the industry and people who care. To some extent. Manta is kind of, all right. I'm not going to be too crazy about it. Um, but not just Manta, not just like lots of creators studio, Comet Wizard. And these are small moves. These are small moves in an industry where big moves can be made very, very fucking quickly. Okay? Big moves can be made very quickly. I have goals to make big moves. And I know lots of people do as well. And I, I, think, I think we should look at this industry right now as something that is entering into what I'm going to consider as adolescence. YouTube entered adolescence in 2000 and. 1918, right? When Mr. Beast became the biggest thing since last bread, right around then. Um, YouTube, in my opinion, entered adolescence. It entered, it entered a phase where, yeah, the corporatization of YouTube had kind of fucks things a little bit, but it also shows that the long tail of content places, like of content houses, it belongs to the creators. As long as those creators have bigger visions than 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 the little that they're doing right now. I don't mean individually, I mean as a collection, okay? That whole adolescence of YouTube led to, what, to, led to the, the platform Nebula. The, 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 the platform that a lot of YouTubers now upload exclusively onto, or like Lindsay Ellis, or upload primarily onto first and focus on a lot more because it, it, it created an environment where they could all earn money that was creator-owned. And like, you know, I think that's the world and the future that web comics is gonna have very soon, sooner than you think, if, if depending on how things go, and like I think we should we should be we should give ourselves that fucking perspective, right? Because it's very easy to feel despair, and very easy to feel scared, and very easy to, to trick yourself into feeling like the uncertainty that we currently exist is not only like it is is not only ever present, but it's permanent. And I wanted to be clear that I don't think it's permanent. I do not think it's permanent. Also, yeah, Manta is is out there buying um buying the buying the comics. Manta is making moves. Manta is making moves. It's really funny. Um, also, I want it to be funnier. I think it's funnier that like, um, I finally understand in the unordinary video why Tom Ackle was so afraid of Webtoon DMing him <laughs> because like. If they the way the way they seem to res, they responded to this was basically nah, -uh. and like I can imagine that's frustrating to talk to. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, and I was like the idea of nobody, but it's not like anyone can join. Yeah, it doesn't have to. It doesn't always have to be for everyone. I think systems can exist to support the people who need them or who can use them, and like those systems are very valuable. Do you know how much I would love to get invited to Nebula? But I know that it's not for me right now. I'm not at the level in my life where Nebula is worth it. Like, I'm not the level of my life where Nebula is worth it. But if I was, I would be there. And I think that's okay for things to be, for, to accept. Like, I think, I think you should give yourself time to build an audience in a way that's more accessible before you start aiming for these bigger spaces. And that's okay. I understand what you're talking about, Kylie, but, like, I feel like for an industry that to be healthy, everything cannot engage in the all-for-all -all mentality because then it will just become another content mill. It needs to engage, some things need to engage in a different mentality to avoid becoming a content mill. I mean, yeah, not any like if it's about politics, just don't just don't be a Nazi. Then I promise you, they will. They don't care. Just don't just don't be evil. Like, don't hate the poor. They they don't care. Because <laughs> I, I I watch people on there. I know how wide the 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 Overton window is there. It's it's not narrow at all. Um, it's kind of crazy how Canvas is an open pitch page for Webtoon and other websites to an extent. Yeah, I mean, Canvas has always been that. People have been poaching for Canvas since time immemorial. And, you know, I think that's I think that's good. I think it's good that we have that space to some extent. I think it's good that Webtoon has provided that space. And I also want to let everyone know one thing. Webtoon basically said this to me, and I'm going to say this to you. If you do not want to deal with any of these things I've talked about, these the actual truth, the 40%, the IP shopping, the... The, the the print shopping for you, the 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 helping you get deals. Just stay in canvas. That's what they said. Just stay in canvas. 
That's what Canvas is for. And I, I don't disagree. Because, like, that is what Canvas is for. To some extent, you know, you don't have to be the biggest fish in the sea. You don't have to have the big contract. Like, if you can succeed with originals, I promise you, you can succeed on your own. If originals is what you think you need to succeed, you are always wrong. You are always wrong. If you ever, if you already, because originals don't come to you when you're not experiencing success, usually. They come to you when you are experiencing success. So if you think that you need a company to succeed and you're already making a successful IP, you are wrong. And if you wonder what success is, don't measure your success by your own expectations for once. Measure your success by the, by, the, by the reality of the space and state of the industry that you are in. Look wide and look far and figure out where you belong. And also, one last fucking thing. Never give your IP to Webtoon when they offer you that fucking contract where they don't actually pay you, but they put you under the daily pass deal so they can bolster their fucking IP thing. Okay, let me just... We're going to the forest. I have a fucking conversation with y'all. One of you said something to me, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to name who. I ain't have a conversation with y'all. Okay, so there's this thing that's been going on for a little bit. What people been offering contracts to, uh, to, to Canvas creators, Canvas creators, and not giving them money for their IP. They've been offering it to Canvas creators for completed work. You've probably seen it. You've probably seen it happen for completed, for fully completed comics. They've been offering them a quote-unquote originals contract, and they put that entire comic behind Daily Pass, right? Do not, I repeat, do not take that contract. Do you know the reason why they're doing that? They're trying to steal your IP. No, incorrect, wrong. They're trying to basically stop you from shopping your IP around. It, 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 it's, it's a ploy. They're trying to stop competitors from paying for you. They see you as monetarily valuable enough that you, would be, you could be bought by someone else. If Webtoon brings you that, be like, ha ha, thanks a lot, buddy, and then say no. No, no, never dig a deal that is not actively paying you, please, okay? The plot is, this is not a thickening plot. This has been happening for a few months. I've just been holding on to it, and I didn't want to bring it up for a while. But, like, please do not fucking do it, okay? Never, never, my mic flipped out. I'm so sorry, gang. Please never take that fucking deal. Do not take that deal, okay? Ever, ever take that deal. All right. Paige, we're in the forest right now. Give me a sacrifice. If Webtoon ever approaches you, listen, Hika says it in Twitch chat, and Hika is right. If Webtoon ever approaches you for anything because they think you're doing great or whatever, I want you to take that approach, take the contract that you offer, take the email, download it, tell them thank you but no thank you, go look around for people to buy your stuff. Because if Webtoon's coming to you, that means that you might have value and you should just sell it. You find someone to sell it to, they'll give you a better deal. Maybe for book printing or something else. Okay? Do that for your best, for yourself. Also, Daily Pass is a scam, and nobody really buys into it. Just, like, just know that. Nobody really buys into it after a very short period of time, because Webtoon doesn't advertise completed comics. Webtoon never advertises completed comics. You know why Webtoon wants all those completed comics? Let me tell you something. In the comics industry, in, in media and IP industry, what happens when companies like Webtoon are going around looking for things that they want to license is they go to these licensing companies, these companies that they want to license to, and they say, hey, look, we have so much IP, guys. We've got so much IP. And they have this, this, this um, fucking Google, present, Google presentation document. They have a Google presentation document with like a thousand comics in there. And what they do when they pay for that ongoing daily pass thing for your com computer comic, they just want to buy you so they can, not only so they can stop competitors from buying you, but so they can put you in the goddamn slide deck so they can like show it to people and look way better because they have more IP. Please do not fuck yourself like that. Don't fuck yourself, okay? Don't fuck yourself with that dildo. It's wrong. Okay, that was a bad joke. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Why don't people send me this shit? I, you know what? Please, thanks. <laughs> I'm gonna add it. Stupid fucking. Why? Why did you send me this? <laughs> I can't believe you made this. Holy shit, when did you draw this? When did you draw this? What the fuck? Hold on, let me put it in the let me put it in the thing. Sorry guys, just give me a second. I'll show you what it is. 
I'll show you what I mean. Why do they want so many IPs? Uh, well, like, if I'm being sort of for real with you, bud, where is Strawberry Count? Where is Strawberry Count? I think I lost it. I need to find it. Can you send it to me again if I can't find it? I think I've just lost it. It's somewhere in my PC. I had to do, I had to do a bunch of reset of my computer. Um, so I might have just lost the file. And I'm, I'm sorry for that because I really, I really treasure everything people draw for me. And so, like, it makes me really sad when I realize something's missing, actually. Like, I actually made me really sad. <laughs> um, hold on, let me get this. Let me get this. <laughs> hey, what the fuck? Thank you. During the options lecture? But yeah, why do they want so many IPs to look important? Like, um, Kylie hits the nail on the head really goddamn hard. To look important. To look super important. Ephemeris follows me? Yeah, PogChamp. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's, like, good, but I, I think we're friends. I think we're buddies. I think we're, like, m m mutes. M mutuals. Are we mutuals? It's like, it's just <laughs> Actually, let me check. At least they followed me until recently. I don't think they do anymore. <laughs> We're just like, fine, whatever. <laughs> I swear I checked the other day and I was like, oh, they're following me. That's super neat. And then like, I don't think they're anymore. I don't care. Anyway, <laughs> I was going to like make sure we were mutual. Oh, wait, it's the wrong account. Oh, I'm just an idiot. Okay. <laughs> I'm just a fool. Yeah, they do. I just didn't follow back. Because I'm a fool. I am the problem here. Let me make this clear. I'm the issue. <laughs> Good F, honestly. I've, I've, I've miss F. I need to DM them. I just, I'm so bad at keeping up with the moodies. Um, <laughs> with the mutuals. Money mutual. Okay. So what did we learn, guys? One, please don't sign your IP away to people just for fucking fun. Because you think you're, it's going to give you a better chance of doing well in the industry. I promise you, the moment people are approaching you for a deal, you are already valuable. You're like forgetting your personal sense of value. You're already valuable to the industry. Do not think that this short term thing is going to give you the opportunity that you might want. I completely understand why you might think that. I spent 10 years trying to get into the comics industry as like a full time gig. Okay. I really do get it. But I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, you are infinitely valuable and your work is valuable. And it just takes finding the right group of people to see the value in it that I see in your work, that you see in your work. And it takes time. Don't take the first fucking deal that comes out for you. Okay? Do not take the first fucking deal that comes out for you. I know you might be hard up money, but there are better ways to make money and there are probably better ways for you to make money in the short term. As someone that probably never has money or not for something bigger, does casting call work for a webtoon for real kind of people as well? Do you mean casting call for like um, uh, pink, pink like litter heart? Just make it pinky, pinky, pinky glitter heart. Why like, what the hell happened to my eyes? Pinky, do you mean like for like making like a like an audio comic? Is that something? Is that what you mean? Um, but just let me understand where you're coming up for casting call, bud. Also, remember that like whatever IP development a company promises you, you can do a lower rent, lower cost version of it. That if it would have worked for you with them, would work for you now. Okay. Just remember that. You have an audience, utilize them. Advertise yourself. Pick a centralized point you want them to always go to for you and make yourself well-known in that place. Engaging your comment section as much as possible in the early days so that people know that you're interactive. Don't take everything they say to heart. I completely understand that it can really hurt. Don't take everything comments say to heart. Try and make sure that you are likable and then you can spread your wings outwards. Getting a team to help... Or something, but audio also works. If you, I mean, sometimes casting calls can help finding a team. Um, sometimes you find a team that really believes in your work, you know. Sometimes you don't. And sometimes I'm gonna be real with you. Uh, most webcomic creators I've met over the years, the reason they got their shit made the way they got it made, and the reason why their shit succeeded the way it did, is because they couldn't find a team and they just learned how to draw. They learned how to draw. They learned how to write. They learned how to do everything on their own, and then suddenly they became good at it. One day they realized that they were bought. They were, they were, they were, as the kids say, pog champ. But the kids do not say that. And please be positive. Yeah. You know what? I hate to say it. Be positive. It sounds dumb. But like your work, if you're not, if you're not positive about your work, people can't see that. What can you do if you're not nice? What do you mean if you're not nice? 
I don't really understand. Yeah, do, like, look, I look. Don't complain. Like, leave the complaining to me. Let me be your source of complaining. I will do all your complaining. I will do all your getting mad, and then you guys can just tweet positivity on me. You come here and I get mad for you. Then go on main and be positive. Okay? Like that's what you should do. Don't don't put your your shit on you. Put your shit on me. No, don't. That's actually the wrong sentence. I regret so many things. Oh, there it is. God, how did I miss this? I just didn't see the camera. I mean, it's not hard to make people like you. Most of you are like most of the people in my chat are very likable people right now. Like I, I can't think of a single person in my chat right now. Who isn't likable? Uh, maybe Sim. That's just because Sim is like short. That's not a crime, but you know, you know, being short's not a crime, but you know, Sim. <laughs> I'm just saying, <laughs> you know. <laughs> being short. <laughs> Sim literally catching strays for nothing. <laughs> All right, chat. Chat. Being nice is just an important skill to learn. Just learn how to fake it. Learn how to be positive. Learn how to be meaningfully positive to people. Don't be a dick. Don't make strangers deal with your problems. And I promise you, you're going to like, you're going to make waves in your industry, whatever industry you're working. I promise. It's that easy. Like as long as you're nice, and as long as you stay. One of the things, I want to say, one of the big things I've learned being here for 10 years what makes you succeed is just being here for 10 years. Like, I didn't start seeing success at all until last year to this year. After eight years of doing a podcast, like, after eight years of doing my shit, I didn't start seeing success until the last two years. Partly because I got better. Partly because I got better at what I did, right? But partly because I started communicating better. And, and partly because I was just here. I was just here. When everybody started looking for people, I was still here. Everyone else who started with me left, you know? Pixels and Panels turned into a weird little AI comic company. All of the people who started with me are gone. <laughs> so, like, some a big part of doing well in an industry is just not leaving. So it's like, is like, pushing forward, le learning from your mistakes, and just still being there. And you will, you will succeed. I promise you. I so promise you. I promise you so hard. It's only a matter of time. And I hate to say it, but it is really a matter of time. Success is being the most stubborn. That is very true, Paige. That's very true. All this exploitation is because they don't think you're stubborn enough to stay here and, and fight. If Also, one last thing. One last thing. If you're going to sell an IP to Webtoon for any reason, pick the worst IP you've got going. Pick the IP you couldn't give a shit about to any company. Okay? When you're selling your IPs to companies, especially when you're early in your career, just start picking the shit that you don't care about. Okay? The low-cost, low-rent stuff you're like, I guess I like this, though, this story. I don't know what happened to my accent, but I started talking like this. I guess I like this story. Pick that one, you know, and, like, sell it to them and uh, make your money that way, that way. All right? That's, that's the smartest thing you can do for yourself. Understand me? All right? Sell the shit that you couldn't give a fuck about. Yes, yeah, show you did do that. But, like, I still got mad at you because you didn't read the contract. But you did do that. So that is true. If you only have one IP, make a new one. Okay? Make a new one. Make a new one and, and, and like, just sell it. Like, like, look, making IPs is not hard. It doesn't have to be good. Make something that you won't hate yourself making and just make. And make an IP that you won't hate yourself while you work on it. And, like, and like sell that one. Okay? Sell that one. Or pick an open pick an open license IP. Speak something that like is currently in public domain. Change a few names around and then sell that. Like I'm being so real. I'm being so real. If you rewrote Romeo and Juliet right now, nobody would fucking tell. If you rewrote goddamn like I don't, I don't know if the catcher in the rye is public domain, but if you pick pick a story that's public domain, rewrite it a little bit. Like you can literally rewrite Othello, and I bet you money. Othello would be big on Webtoon. Like, Othello is literally the story of love, loss, and death. At the end, everyone dies, I think. Like, you're telling me that won't be a massive goddamn romance Webtoon? You want to tell me Othello won't be the biggest romance Webtoon? You can't do Sherlock Holmes. It's too well known. But you got to pick the, a little bit of the, the less known stuff. 
to Othello, King Lear. Like, Dragon Ball is fucking Journey to the West. You... <laughs> the fucking movie Ran. Do you guys know the movie Ran, 1985 movie by fucking Akira Kurosawa? Akira Kurosawa's movie Ran is just King Lear, but in Japan, but in feudal Japan. Okay? And he, it rocks. Ran is a great movie. Go watch Ran. The Lion King is Furry Hamlet. What I'm saying to you is if you don't want to sell the thing where you put your heart and soul into it, where your boys are in it, where your girls are in it, where your, where your NB characters are in it, that they mean so much to you, right? The story about your life, about how you feel. Just go find some open, some fucking open source thing. Some fucking whatever. Let me write it a little bit. Put it out. I'm being so for real with you. Like, I'm being so for real with you. Okay? No one will know. No one will know. Then they're going to know. No, they're not going to know. <laughs> Sorry, the TikTok came up. The TikTok audio came up in my head. I'm so brain rotted. <laughs> like, about that, that audio. That's audio specifically I'm brain rotted for. Nobody's going to know. They're going to know. <laughs> How would they know? <laughs> How would they know? <laughs> And even if they don't know, Kylie's right. They don't give a shit. The first step with comics or YouTube series is figuring out how to plot and hoping you can simplify it enough you don't struggle with making it. Uh, I don't disagree to some extent, Pinky, but I would I actually posit a different thing. The best way to start any content IP thing that you do is what um, one of my favorite YouTubers calls the Yoinkin Twist. Okay? The Yoinkin Twist. Do you know what the Yoinkin Twist is, kids? It's where you basically take an idea that you've seen somewhere, take it, change it up a little bit so it doesn't look like their homework. Put it out as your own. The yoink and twist, okay? Always do the yoink and twist. It's great. It works well. It, it gets you what you're looking for every single time, okay? Othello, but it's in China. That's it. Freaking, freaking. <laughs> All right, I started laughing when I said that. Um, Winnie the Pooh, but it's, but Christopher Robin is having an existent is, is having like a mental breakdown in a in, in a ward, and that he's imagining Winnie the Pooh and 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 I forget the name of the hundred acre and the the entire hundred acre woods, and like that's the story. Like just the yoink and twist. Harris, you disgust me. <laughs> Where the fuck? <laughs> okay. All right. I think we're kind of at the end because like I I don't think there's much more I haven't talked about. So he, we're in question phase. It's question time. Let's do question time, kids. Let's do question time. Any questions you want to ask? Any questions whatsoever? Somebody asked me about super likes. Um, I think they're bad. I think super likes are bad, like really bad, by the way. Whoever asked me about them, I don't like them. Like I think they like I think they're just offsetting money over money spending on to over to the readers, and it's gonna make the readers hate reading so much. It's gonna make the readers less likely to engage. Um, and they have no data to back super likes as a workable thing on on Webtoon, as far as I can tell. It's the new Webtoon monetization system we could talk about in the Discord, but it's called a super like, essentially a creator, a reader pay. It, think of it like Twitch bits, but for Webtoon. That's what it is. Um, how am I? As Sim always asks. I am doing great, Sim. I had a delicious Burger King dinner, and um, I'm hoping to spend tonight working on catching up with some writing. I have a video coming out soon that's a comic review, and I'm super looking forward to that, too. Um, what do I think about the Canvas spam ads? The Canvas ad system is so bad. Like, one of the reasons I, I, I love global comics as much as I did earlier on, and I still kind of do, um, is, like, is, is that they don't have ads uh, by design. And I think I think like the ad, the current structure of ads, especially when especially when you're in in a in a recession, especially when you're in a recession like we're in now, ads become really fucking crazy. Ads get weird when you're in a recession because the people who are willing to buy ads, um, the ad the cost of ads goes down for the and so the people who can who can buy ads like gets weird and you get like the weird porn ads I've been seeing on web too. And it, it's all it's all a, it's all a thing that came about because. Of the recession, ad systems I don't like them very much already. So, I think the spam ads are just like a natural evolution of a, of an economy that is losing money, you know, and it's it's happening in front of us. Uh, in the UK, Burger King is pretty good. Oh, the weird call girl uh, ad. You mean the one with the spam? Oh, that's just Webtoon's like shitty spam detection. Like that's a. 
you can prevent stuff like that. You can prevent like crazy uploads like that. But Webtoon doesn't like um, hasn't built a system that prevents that. Uh, pro- likely by design, but I have no idea. It, it, I think I think I think that's just like a random bot thing. There's been a lot more bot activity lately as well. I should point out. Bot activity always goes through like an up and down in media. So like we're currently in the up. The down will come soon when we all figure out to prevent these. But bot activity does this. And lately, bot activity has been at an all-time high, even on Twitter. Even on Discord. We've been getting crazy bots in our Discord too. Um, so, you know, there's that. Did you know we have a Discord, by the way? Did you know we have a Discord? Um, Discord, uh, for everyone who hasn't joined, Discord... Uh, discord.webcomicshub.com Lakota UK discord.webcomicshub that's what it is Lakota UK <laughs> that's our discord uh, if you go to that link you can join the discord uh, do I see the webtoon survey which one the one from which webtoon survey can you send it to me or do you mean the old one the the one that like was mostly who like who just tell me who because there's been a few going about I've seen at least two. I'm not sure. I'm not sure which one you're talking about. I miss British KFC. Oh, British KFC is so good. Like, honestly. People could do that long panel set and the ones on Instagram people do and I never get how to form them without it being set. I don't know. Oh, there was one in the app? I didn't see that. Like, I don't open the app as much anymore, if I'm honest with you. I'm kind of disconnected from the typical reader experience. One of the reasons I'm writing reviews is so I can... I can get back into that. Um, so I'm sorry, I, I missed it. But what did it ask, if you mind telling me? I'm super happy to learn. We can talk about it offline. You can DM, you can DM me. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, that was all for super like, right? Holy shit. How much you would for a sub-based model? <laughs> okay, all right. I would love to see that data. <laughs> I would pay money to see that data, honestly. I might ask Web2 the results of that data just to learn about it. Um, okay, any more questions? Any more questions? Just, I'm, I'm literally happy to take any and all questions. If you find the link, DM it to me. I'd love to be able to screenshot it and save that for myself. Um, that's super helpful for me and my, my mental, as the kids say. As the kids say. Um, I should start putting the Discord link in the pin chat. I don't think there's... I hope I didn't miss anything. I hope everyone feels like they understood everything. I'm sorry this was a business class. Did people do the webtoon? Who took the webtoon post and ran with it? What would you say? I, I understand. Did the people who took the webtoon post and ran with it? The, red, the Reddit post and ran with it? I just say, like, I get it. You're right. The system is fucked. It's an unfair system. And, like, unless I see more evidence, I'm inclined to believe that, like, these, these people are, are just very hurt and very scared and very stressed out. And I get it. Also, guys, remember to like the video, please. I need the support. Uh, even when you're live, if you like the video, it really does a lot for the video itself, actually. So please remember to like. Anyway, um, like, subscribe, and share. Shares are huge. Shares are big. Do a share. Send it to people. Anyway, um, the, the, <laughs> the, the people who took that post, I get it. They're just stressed out. They, they, they took something they believed in and they ran with it. And I completely understand why. Webtoon has maligned the entire industry. And of course, these creators feel unsafe and like they must do something. I don't blame them. I don't blame them at all. I don't blame them at all. What do I think about the new Webtoon comment system for Webtoon? It's really good. The Webtoon comment system is really good. I actually really like it. That's it. Like, I have no secret bad opinions. It kind of fucked up the work I was doing, but I'm very happy to see them making these changes in terms of the basic level of interaction creators can have with each other and the recommendation of comics, I think that's huge. Huge, 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 right? Massive. Um, I think there's definitely more is needed, but I think that's massive for right now. Uh, more and more is 100% needed. Um, and I like that you can like, I, I love it. I love what it can do. I love that you can support your other creators now with the comments. I love that you can you can make posts and like, with, with emojis that are great. I love the gifts. I love gifts. Uh, like, I'm a big gift person. In the company Slack, I'm a big gift person. So, know that. The server was US only. Still send it to me. I could just use a VPN, love. That, that might be why I didn't see it as well, because even when I opened it, I was UK. 
Link in the comments. What else is there? Is the Discord link in the description as well? Um, for Pinky Glitterheart, I believe it should be love. I believe it should be. Also, sorry if I realized. I just realized recently I was in a call with a bunch of Americans and I called somebody love, and they were like, "Why'd you call me that?" And I'm like, "I'm I'm British. <laughs> I just do it I'm, involuntarily. I'm sorry." Um, but I re I'm, I'm sorry if that was weird. But um, it should be love. It should be in the in the in the in the description. Uh, but also it's just Discord. If you just type into your browser or into any browser, discord.webcomicshub.co.uk, it'll take you straight to the Discord. Um, and it should work easily. Webtoon has updates now. Yeah, Webtoon Webtoon updates regular, pretty regularly. I think. Um, pretty regularly. Uh. What do you think of uh, my class was good? Thank you for saying my class was good. I really appreciate that. That really boosts my ego for the week. Um, whew, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just what it is. Okay, if no one needs anything else from me, uh, I'm going to do a bit of a little ad and then I'm going to leave. Little ad. Okay. I work, I work a lot on videos and I work on a lot of stuff. Uh, for the creator community and also for myself, I will admit that. Um, and you know, your support in those situations is in, when it comes to dealing with these things is always very helpful. I know, you know, I made I make content for artists. <laughs> uh, I make content for artists, so I'm not like particularly the best at it. But if you are willing to support the group, Patreon.com slash Webcomics Hub is a great place to go for long-term small donations. Um, Kofi, uh, I have a Kofi for the dev development team. Dev Comics Hub uh, is always a is, is, is it's Kofi.com slash webcomics hub as the Kofi. It's always a great place for one time donations, uh, and you know all that stuff really helps me just like put heads down and read documents and when I'm going through industry things and working on all these projects, all that money goes towards these projects because I think it's important for the industry and I like to do work, as much work as I can. Um, it also helps me pay my boys with pizza. Um, me and the boys are when we open when we're going to open beta. Me and the people making um, common creator studio for Webtoon are thinking of having a pizza party, and I'm going to buy them pizza because you know they work too hard. So there is that, uh, and that's because people have supported me in the past, and hope people come to support me in the future for all of my future projects. I hope to keep making you proud. Hopefully, I already do. Other than that, there's no more questions. And um, what's a me ad? Oh, a me, oh, it's a me ad. Oh, yeah, my me ad. Yeah, I see what you mean. Since um, there's, there's no more questions, it seems. And like everyone seems satisfied. And we've covered the topic, I think, in as much detail as possible. Thank you for watching. Look out for my next video, which is going to be a review. And look out for a couple videos I'm going to be posting on a different channel uh, for, for which is from one of my streams where I did a watch along. Look out for those. Uh, yeah, a couple videos coming out this week. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Very proud of myself. Getting videos out. Very proud of my editor. Uh, who's the best? My editor is the best. Thank you so much for coming to the stream. Thank you for all your time. Have a great fucking day. Have a great fucking night. Make sure you eat. Don't you fucking sit on that computer drawing all night. Stop drawing. Get a sandwich, you stupid bastard. Make sure you eat. Make sure you feel, make sure you rest. Make sure you drink water. Okay? Okay? Good. Thank you. And if you think, if you, if you try to eat at your desk, I will kill you. Leave the desk and eat somewhere else. Even if you have to go eat on the porch. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. All right. All right. All right. All right. I am not your real dad, but I, you should fucking eat food. You should eat. Okay. God damn it. You people can't die on me yet. Remember to join the Discord. Link in the description, too. Okay. Thank you so much. Goodbye. They don't know that I'm still here. <laughs>